home. You're watching the Sun Belt Conference on ESPN. It is a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Statesboro, Georgia, and it is homecoming for the Eagles as Georgia Southern welcomes in the Warhawks of Yul Monroe on ESPN+. This is an interdivisional matchup between both sides out of the East. Georgia Southern 1-1 one one in conference play, while the Warhawks still looking for their first win in the conference currently 0-3. We thank you for joining us alongside David Holby and Whitney Hayworth. I'm Danny Wall. This is the midway point of the season, both the Eagles and the Warhawks six games in. Entering the second half of the year, David, what's the biggest focus from each side? It's about finishing strong. This is a ULM team that could very well be 4-2 and two on the year. And for Georgia Southern, they are 4-2. and two. And look, they still have a great shot at the Sun Belt Championship. Everything is in their path. All they have to do is win out. Well, this matchup for both sides, trying to bounce back after their losses last week. And for ULM, it was a tough one-point loss on the road to Texas State. Yeah, it was tough. TJ Finley able to get two touchdowns in the last four minutes of that game. But the difference was 105 plays. The Bobcats ran on ULM. They could not get off the field. Just 3 of 14 on third downs on the offensive end. They're going to have to clean that up. And for Georgia Southern, JMU routed them. 28-point loss to the Dukes. And... The Eagles could not find a way to get the explosive plays. You look at the game, they had more first downs, more time of possession, but now they're going to have to clean it up. Well, for more on the Eagles' loss to James Madison, listen it down to our sideline reporter, Whitney Haber, with more. Thanks, Danny. The question mark for Georgia Southern was, were they going to be able to turn the page from that devastating loss at JMU? And according to Coach Helton, they turned that page before they ever left Harrisonburg, Virginia. He said he walked into that locker room postgame to find Caleb Hood with the entire team locked in, heads up, and he told them, this is not our team, this is not who we represent, this is not our standard. Coach Helton said there's a reason that Caleb Hood has that C on his chest, and it was instances like that. They came back to practice on Sunday. Coach Helton said that leadership translated into Sunday's practice. It's been a great practice all week long. So now let's see if Georgia Southern has really turned that page. Thanks, Whitney, and we'll see the Eagles start with the football to open up this matchup, but you get a look at head coach Clay Helton, and we will see quarterback Davis Brin, who threw two picks last week against JMU. However, his passing yards, David, he's one of the top 10 passers in the country. Yeah, he's great when he can get the ball out quick, but he struggles with his decision making whenever he gets rushed in the pocket, tied for second in the country with interceptions at nine. He just got to be able to stay in rhythm. Went 31 for 52 with 271 yards. He will start from the ULM 25. Jalen White, the running back, lined up to the right of Bryn. Three receivers set. Georgia Southern back home after having a sellout crowd a few weeks ago against Coastal Carolina. First play is going to be a play action. Bryn going to go for a deep ball, and he's got a man. It's Caleb Hood, and Hood having a great start to this one after having 10 catches last week. Yeah, he's out of the slot right there, a little fade route, and Coach Ellis said it. They need more explosive plays. He's going to dial them up today. Hurry up offense for the Eagles. And they give it to Jalen White up the middle. Offensive coordinator Brian Ellis said, hey, it was on me last week for not being more aggressive in the play calling. And you're already seeing the Eagles off to an explosive start. A great ball by Brand as well. He is so accurate on the deep ball. They just got to find more ways to get him in those uh, chances. So the 24-yard pass from Brand to Hood. And a gain of five from Jalen White. Second and five from the 41. And the ball is out, and the Warhawks recover. Oh, no. Kennard Snyder picking up off of the mistake of the Eagles. What a turnaround. Wow. This is the way the Warhawks are going to be able to have a chance to win this game. It's turning the ball over. Miscommunication from the center and Chandler Strong. You have a player in motion, and that is not. That's the last thing you want if you're the Eagles. Yeah, Coach Helton talked about in the two losses that they've had this season, when the offense has turned the ball over at least more than one time, things haven't worked out. But we will see Jaya Wright, the graduate quarterback for the Warhawks, went for 150 yards in the air and also can run a dual threat. 
And on first down, it's going to be a sweep on the outside. Bucks Mortimer gets inside the 40. All eyes were on Isaiah Woolard, the running back, going to the right-hand side. But Mortimer just goes jet sweep the other way. Doorhawks want to run the football. There's no question about that. But how do they mix it up with their schemes and their fits? Matt Kubik, the offensive coordinator for ULM, mentioned how the team was running the ball well to start the first half of the season. Six in the Sun Belt now. And here's a handoff to Isaiah Woolard. He gets taken down from behind. Tackled by Justin Myers. Woolard is a tough back, 314 yards on the season. He's somebody he can run in between the tackles, but he can bounce it outside, too. He has that kind of speed. Head coach Terry Bowden for the Warhawks mentioned how Woolard and Smith is kind of the one-two punch in the running game. Only a gain of three there from Woolard, second and seven. Right, throws across the middle, has a man, is caught, Tyrone Howell. For correction, that being Darian Wiley making his 11th reception on the year. Darian Wiley needs to have a big game. We know about how he's their main receiver, but who else is going to step up for Jaya, right? A beautifully placed ball on the slant route. If he can use his arm and be effective, this ULM offense is going to take such a big leap. With the defense focusing on Tyrone Howe, that leaves other receivers open, that being Darius Wiley. Darian Wiley, excuse me. Warhawks in the red zone at the 17 on first down. They give it to Woolard. Bounces outside, absorbing contact, and maybe short of a first down. How has this momentum shifted here for the Warhawks to start? Well, they got the turnover. That's exactly what you want, and that's what this defense prides herself on. They take the football away. A lot of bend but don't break, and once you give this ULM offense a chance to get settled in, not playing from behind, then they can play their style of football, which is run it down your throat and then find a way on the perimeter to bounce it outside. Coach Bowden also mentioned to mix the passing game with the running game. So we've seen a couple of runs here and the pass to Darian Wiley. Second and two. Ball at the nine. Right. Going to the end zone. Oh, what a catch. Touchdown, Warhawks. Tyrone Howe. One-handed reception. That's a Sports Center top 10 play right there. This Georgia Southern crowd is silenced. Tyrone Howe, the leading receiver on this team. My goodness, you're talking about a transfer from Kansas State. 313 yards in the air. That's Wright's favorite target, and you're seeing why. Off the fumble by the Eagles, five plays, 52 yards, and just over two minutes off the clock. Coach Bowden talked about how Tyrone Howe is as gifted as any wide receiver in the Sun Belt, and he needed to have a big day and win one-on-one -on -one battles. Well, he did that right there on the outside and made a spectacular catch to go along with it. Derek McCormick out on the PAT. And right down the middle, the Warhawks, a 7-0 start over Georgia Southern off of an Eagles turnover. Well, when, you, when you have a guy that's 6'3 in the red zone, guess what? You're going to get it to him. That's exactly what the Warhawks want to do. How about this? ULM up 7-0 to Georgia Southern. David, we talked about head coach Terry Bowden and what he mentioned about Tyrone Howell, the receiver, but offensive coordinator Matt Kubrick also said that they needed to get Howell in the red zone. Yeah, they specifically said they're trying to get him the ball in that red zone area. He's a matchup problem for most cornerbacks in the Sun Belt. With his size at 6'3", but also his elusiveness and great route running, he is such a problem against a lot of DBs. And look, Demel Hickman, Jalen Denton, whoever's lined up against him, it's going to be a long day. They're going to have to make sure they close off on them. They might have to bracket him by the end of the game. That was Howell's 30th catch and sixth touchdown of the season. As ULM has to re-tee the ball, Derek McCormick set to kick this one off. We'll see how Georgia Southern responds in their second drive of the game after a fumble turned into a Warhawks touchdown. Fair catch, it's balled out in the end zone. And Georgia Southern will start from the 25. So really, David, it's feeling like there is some miscommunication there on the snap. But David, who well, your nickname is Davo, what's going to be the drive <laughs> to victory in this match? Well, you couldn't ask for better timing because one of the main keys in this game 
is limiting the turnovers, and the defense that gets those turnovers puts himself in a great situation. You got to win the war in the trenches. Line of scrimmage, offensive line, defensive line, that's going to be a great battle. And also the special teams. I think a great punt return, maybe a kick return, those are the kind of plays that are going to set this game off. Or run right up the middle from Jalen White to start. And off of the coordinator, Brian Ellis said, hey, we have to be more aggressive running the football. Expect a lot more touches from the run game tonight. And I asked him about it. Jalen White, only 10 carries last week. He said they're going to give a lot more design runs for him because Brent's been pulling it from the RPO. Got a gain of seven. Now Brent throws near side and incomplete. Pass was intended for Dalen Cobb. <laughs> It'll be the first third down opportunity for the Eagles. Last week, 12 for 21. They lead the Sun Belt in third down conversions this year and in fourth down conversions. So one thing to keep in mind throughout this game. From the 32, third and three. The handoff up the middle to White. White, plenty of space, gets the first down and then some tackle near White. midfield. Great job by Davis Brand making a check at the line. Two high safeties just run inside zone. Jalen White will do the rest. Great block by Pishon Wembley, the left guard as well. Seems like Jalen White is now back to 100%. As he gets the handoff up the middle and he is stuffed. Nowhere to go. Jalen Ware leading the way. And you look at what White has to work with his O-line, a very veteran offensive line as well. Oh, tons of talent. Brian Miller, Pishon Wembley, Khalil Crowder, so many great linemen in this team. Brand all time, but space in the pocket. Pass it, complete the White. That just shows you right there with the O-line how much time Davis Brand was able to throw. And it's twofold. A, the offensive line is really good, but B, ULM's going to mix up their coverages a lot. They run three down linemen, which is a lot different from what Georgia Southern's seen for most of the year. So it's going to be tricky how much they bring those linebackers in. So after a gain of nothing and an incomplete pass, it's third and ten for the Eagles. Ball to 48. Bryn, all kinds of time. Throws across the middle, has Derwin Burgess, and he breaks out of traffic. One man to beat inside the ten. Touchdown, Eagles. 52-yard strike from Bryn to Burgess. What did I say, Danny? The one thing they were missing a week ago was the explosive plays. So well, what do you get right here? It's a deep slant route, but Derwin Burgess takes it to the house. That's great yards after catch. And what a strike from Davis Bryn. Yeah, Clay Elton mentioned that entering this game, Burgess is about 90 to 95% with better than last week. And mentioned how tricky it can be with AC sprains because you feel good all week and then you get hit and you're sore again. But it seemed like for Burgess after absorbing that contact, he was just fine taking it to the house. PAT is good by Michael Lance and we are tied up at seven. About five minutes in the first quarter. We're off to get the football when we come back after the break on ESPN+. Plus. Georgia Southern responding after fumbling the opening drive, finding Derwin Burgess at 52 yards, and David Burgess alongside Caleb Hood is the receiving duo for the Eagles today. Man, they are nasty. Caleb Hood and Derwin Burgess together. I mean, that's one of the best one-two punches you're going to find in football. Well, for more on Georgia Southern's receiver, we'll send it back down to Whitney Hayward with more. Coach Helton told us yesterday, as did Coach Ellis, that they are so happy to have so much depth in the wide receiver core. They came over to both to all their wide receivers. They congratulated Derwin on that play, but they also coached up Dalen Cobb and they said, hey, listen, every play matters. Your chance is coming. And we knew that Dalen Cobb was probably going to get some opportunities today coming back from injury. So I'm excited to see the potential that he has later in this game. And I know Coach Helton always says to, to be coached, is to be loved, and they certainly loved on every single wide receiver just now. Thanks, Whitney. Going more in depth about the depth of the wide receivers, this time last year, the wide receiver court was hit with a lot of injuries, and that's one thing that Coach Helton is so happy about this year that a majority of the receivers are healthy at this point of the season. Well, let me put you put it into perspective like this. Offensive coordinator Brian Ellis said Dalen Cobb 
might be the best receiver in that wideout room. And guess what? You got Caleb Hood. You got Derwin Burgess. You have Anthony Queeley. That's saying something. You also have Jalen Barnett who stepped yeah. up last week. Following the return from Alvin Luke, the Warhawks starting from the 29-yard line and may have been sent back to the line of scrimmage, may have been taking it back a yard, but no gain on first down. Justin Rhodes up the middle, as well as Latrell Buller. Those two guys in the interior, they're going to have to fight. So a gain of one, it's a jet sweep. Here's Nana Davis rotating on the outside, gets the 40 and a first down. So the receiver on the run, but the Warhawks have a receiving duel as well, led by Tyrone Howe. Absolutely. Tyrone Howe is clearly their number one wideout. ULM is still looking for that second guy to step up, but Wiley could be that guy. 142 yards and a touchdown. They've got to find more ways to get him involved, but I like what I'm seeing with these jet sweeps. So it's a first down from the 39 for the Warhawks. Four receivers set. Hunter Smith, the running back. Back up behind Isaiah Woolard. And the ball is out. It's recovered by the Warhawks, but it'll be a loss. Justin Rhodes getting on top of Jaiwa Wright. Justin Rhodes paves Rhodes. Watch this. I mean, you have Latrell Bullard eating up two blocks, and on the other end, Justin Rhodes, he's going to win his one-on-one -on -one battle more times than not, and it's because of his twitch. He is really quick for an interior defensive lineman. That's going to be a loss of three. Second and 13, Wright will keep. Rolling right, he has wheels, but he won't get far. And instead, that's Blake Murphy, the third string quarterback in. And he gets taken down, gonna bring up third down for the Warhawks. So this is interesting. With Jaira Wright not in, the third stringer Blake Murphy taking over in this drive. Third and 11 after a brief gain of two from Murphy. Play clock winding down. They get it off. Murphy throws. Almost intercepted by TJ Smith. And that'll bring up fourth down, but a flag on the play. We'll hear from Marshall Lewis, our head referee of the game. So the tight end, Nolan Quinlan, an illegal shift, and the Eagles will decline. It'll bring up fourth down. Interesting, Danny, bringing in this new quarterback. But look, he's only a freshman, but he was one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the nation as a high schooler, number 29th in the country, rated by ESPN. So he does have talent. Punt. Sent out by Braxton Gilbo. Caleb Hood back to return. That takes a Warhawk bounce. Wow. Going across the five. That's going to pit Georgia Southern deep. You can't really place a punt much better than that one. That's a big special teams play. That's one of my keys to victory. Even when you're not getting things going on offense, Flipping fields, putting Georgia Southern in their own five, that's big. So I'm intrigued to know now for the Warhawks and head coach Terry Bowden, the situation going on with Jaiwa Wright. And not even going to the backup in Brian Garcia, going deep to your third string in Blake Murphy. Well, what Murphy does give you is that running ability, just like Wright. He might even be faster than right out of the backfield. The Eagles will start back at their own four. Hand off. O.J. Arnold pushing through for extra yards, gets across the 10, tackled out to 12. Hurry up offense from the Eagles continues. Brent, another handoff to Arnold, and Arnold gets the first down. And look at that gap on the right side. Khalil Crowder giving enough space for Arnold to walk through. This offensive line, I mean, they create so much opportunity. Look at that space. And you have probably five yards in between the center and the right guard. So pushing three, pushing things up. The Eagles at the 18 on first down. Arnold again. 
I mean, the way Arnold just breaks through, and you mentioned it, it's all about the offensive line. They only had one replacement from last season to this year. I guarantee you, Coach Ellis told this offensive line, hey, be ready, because we're, just, we're running the football. What is this? This call here from Bryn, throwing the paws up on second and short. Arnold, it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. O.J. Arnold, another Eagles first down. Bruiser. You have Jalen White, O.J. Arnold. Why not give it to him? I mean, again, great blocking this time on the left side. Pishon Wembley sealing off his defender. Offensive coordinator Brian Ellis said he wanted to run the ball a little bit more. Take a lot of time off the clock. Under six and a half to go in the first. Arnold still in at running back. Four receivers set for Bread. And it's Arnold. Oh, what a hole. Gets about a gain of six, seven yards. And Arnold has been a great backup to Jalen White throughout the season. Absolutely. That was a great check by Davis Brand, too. He saw Michael Bratton creeping up, so you run an inside zone to the opposite side of the field. Second and short. Brynn play action. Throws far side. Has Hood. Did he keep it? <laughs> and... They will say the pass is complete, so somehow Caleb Hood bobbled that one in bounds and made the reception. Clearly the Eagles trying to hurry up and run a play so they don't take another look at this. Or have ULM trying to challenge it. Yeah, here's a better look. I mean, Caleb Hood probably bobbled this three separate times. One, two, three. Off the helmet. <laughs> and there he grabs it. You can't, it's hard to see the foot from that angle. He clearly had possession that last grab. Well, we were seeing out on the field. Take a look at off of the corner there, Brian Ellis. But head coach Terry Bowden was standing right next to the line judge and saying, hey, I want to challenge that. He will. So they will look back and review this catch from Hood. I mean, on that sideline, Terry Bowden may have had the <laughs> may have had the best vision out of all of us there. Yeah, he has the best look. Definitely better than you and me. We're on the opposite side of the field. He was right there on the play. Here you have Caleb Hood. This was a great throw by Brent as well. He has possession right there. It's, it's, it's close to call because when he was getting possession, his left foot seemed to have been down right there. But it's also going to be where his right foot landed as well. Initially, his left foot is in on that grab, but you see it shoot up in the air after he got hit. So the left foot is down there, but then it goes up. And so the question now is, does that left foot regain control and bounce. Good close out by Lou Tillery. Well, if it does stand, it wasn't, uh, we've already seen some great catches. Yeah. You <laughs> see Katie Dorsey having some fun there on the sidelines. What do you see here, David? Here's a different angle. But what I'm looking for is right, right here. You see. Ah, yep, the left foot. The left foot's in. The question is. Did he maintain does possession? Does he maintain possession? I, I mean, he does in my eyes. I think that's a catch. Because he clearly has control. It's not bobbling out of his hands. And that left foot is still on the turf. I would expect this to stand. Well, if you're tuning into this match, Georgia Southern and ULM, the Eagles led by head coach Clay Helton and the Warhawks led by head coach Terry Bowden. Those last names may sound familiar. Helton and Bowden, a lot of football history through these two coaches and their families, David. <laughs> coach Bowden. And it's, excuse me there, but it seems like the, Call confirmed, it is a catch by Hood, and you can see Coach Bowden a little bit confused. 
Yeah, I think that was the right call. He clearly had possession of it, and that left foot was still touching the turf. But you mentioned Bowden. I mean, that's one of the most famous last names in the history of college football. But here's what I'm talking about. You see that left foot. It's still on the turf. So the right call by the refs. And it is a 10-yard gain from Bryn to Hood. So first and 10 from the 46. But over five and a half to go in the opening quarter. Here's Keaton Upshaw in motion. They give it to White. Short game. Warhawks going to have to start closing in on those gaps. You bring another player to the right side to help with blocking. Jalen Ware and Aiden Huntington, they're going to be asked to do a lot today. Huntington, one of the best edge rushers on this team. Second and eight. Bryn. Flushed out of the pocket. Going back and throws. Incomplete. Once again, looking for Cobb. Bryn did a good job just to extend that play. Cobb couldn't corral it. Warhawks, I mean, they decide to only send three, drop everybody else back, cover eight. You don't see that early in games like this. Well, they want to confuse Brand. They're going to give him a lot of different looks in this matchup. Well, the Eagles so far, two for two on third downs, third and eight. Brand throws near side, incomplete, looking for Hood. Pass broken up by A.J. Watts. Great closeout by Watts right there. That looked like a sure completion, but Watts out of Columbus, Georgia, making a great step on the ball. A couple of Warhawks players making their return to the state of Georgia. So we'll see Alex Smith, the freshman, first punt of the day. Smith was credited as the hero in the Coastal Carolina win a few weeks ago. It's pinned at the 18, and we'll get an eagle bounce to the 17. Nothing that Bugs Mortimer can do. We'll see the Warhawk offense back out after the break. Tied at 7 on ESPN+. Plus. Back on ESPN+, Plus, Danny Wall, David Holby, Whitney Hayward from a special guest inside the booth. We're joined by the <laughs> Georgia Southern mascot, Gus. Uh, Always great to have Gus in the booth, and I know he's having a great time because it is homecoming for Georgia Southern. I don't know. <laughs> you are some snacking on some tortillas. Uh, uh, all right, you know what? I'm going to save it for when I need it later in the game. David. I, I'm you, hungry, you, Danny. You want, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little hungry. Ah, well, Gus, we appreciate you stopping by. Play resumed on the field and on first down. Great job by the Eagles defensive line, pushing the quarterback out of bounds. Well, Gus, we thank you for joining us up here, and always great to see you. And I can confirm, I did eat a little bit of that tortilla. Oh, you did. Well, you see here, Kondry Jackson sending Isaiah Woolard out of bounds. It'll be a loss of four. Jira right back as the quarterback. A screen throw on second down, and once again, another push out of bounds from the Eagles. Coach Bowden going with both QBs. I mean, right, he adds the element of passing a little bit more than what you're going to see from the freshman. Well, you see the O-line for the Warhawks, David, and often the quarterback, Matt Kubik, said that this is a pretty reliable group. They've been with the program for at least two years, so very solid O-line they have, led by the center, Zaria McGill. A lot of experience. He's a well-coached offensive line as well. You run the football a lot. I mean, they're asked to do a lot. It's third and 14 from the Warhawks, 13. Right. Rolling right. Fires. Oh, what a catch on the inside. And pushed out of bounds. It's Albert Luke making the reception first down Warhawks. Look at how tough of a throw this is. Not to mention he's on the move. He's got to squeeze this between Mark Stampley and then the high safety. That is a precision throw, and that's what they need from him. Talk about connecting on a dime. As right back into the quarterback. 
Fresh set of downs. Going near side, here's Luke again. Far side, rather, and he gets stuck behind the line of scrimmage. What's your take on the Warhawks going with these outside wide plays? Well, they're trying to catch this defense off guard because, truthfully, the interior of this defensive line, Latrell Bullard, you have Justin Rhodes, Isaac Walker, they know how much havoc they can produce, so they have to offset that by going on the edge. Even though a loss of two, the Warhawks averaging almost six yards a play. Oh, the snap, the line stayed still, and the catch is made at midfield. Tyrone Howell has made some spectacular catches. It's only his second reception of the game. This man's got glue on his gloves, Danny. I mean, what in the world? Talk about glue. Glue man been on the lineman's cleats. They did not move on that snap. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, it was a great uh, hard count. Weston Wallace jumped. You have a free play. Right, running up the middle on first down. Gets to the Eagles, 45. Already starting to see some chippiness out there on the field. Darian Wiley getting to face the male Hickman. Hurry up offense from the Warhawks after a gain of three. Two minutes to go in the first. Play almost broken up. Good job in the middle by Trayvon Locke, but it seemed like Woolard got back to the line of scrimmage. You have to appreciate the balance you're seeing from ULM right now. See head coach Terry Bowden for the Warhawks. He actually faced Georgia Southern back in the late 80s when he was the head coach at Sanford. Remembers the last few times here in Statesboro facing off against the great Irk Russell. He has tons of stories. Third and eight. Right. Quick throws. Just off for Hal. Eagles send the house. Man coverage on the outside. Wright just got to place that ball better. That'll bring out the punt team. As head coach Clay Helen. First time facing the Warhawks this year. Did not face them last season, his inaugural year with the Eagles. Derek McCormick back out the punt. Caleb Hood back to return. Last one, pit the Eagles back at the four. This one, same look, same result. Man, some good punts from McCormick, putting the Eagles back here. Another just great punt, backspin on it. If you're not going to get it done on offense, find a way to flip the field. This is the second time we've seen it now. And those are the kinds of plays that are going to shift this game. A lot of times people forget this game, the football game can be won in three assets, yeah. offense, defense, and special teams. And for Absolutely. Special teams for ULM, their punter, McCormick, putting the Eagles back at the four again. And in the last drive, the Eagles ended up punting with Alex Smith. Let's see what happens this time around. First down, handoff to White, absorbing contact. Ran into Tre Trevor Randall. Randall just couldn't bring him down. Jalen White, you know about his speed, but six foot 215, he packs a punch as well. He is a true definition of a power back and on the top 100 freaks list as well. Second and five, White, that time eight up. Jalen Ware taking him down. Eagles may have time for one more play in the quarter. Ware just got off his block right there. Great job by this front from ULM. Adjusting to what Georgia Southern's trying to do. The Eagles, as far as running the ball, last in the Sun Belt right now. But both Clay Helton and offensive coordinator Brian Ellis making an emphasis to run the ball more in this game against ULM. And the clock winds down. It's third down and seven. Will the Eagles get this play off? They will not. The first quarter comes to a close. Tied at seven in the prettiest little stadium in America, Paulson Stadium. What a unique start. The Eagles on their opening drive. Turn the ball over, but the Eagles respond with a touchdown. And Whitney Hayward is standing by with Eagles head coach Clay Helton.
Coach Helton, you said that you had to come out in the first quarter and have an up-tempo offense and start fast. ULM was able to slow you down, but you punched right back. What did yeah. you see? Yeah, you know, the early turnover gave them great field position. Good job by their offense scoring, but then a response right back by our offense to make it 7-7. Now we got the ball back in the second quarter trying to take the lead. How have you seen the defense step up this week so far? I think they made adjustments. That first drive, I think, surprised a little bit, and they've made the adjustments now to be able to fit those gaps, uh, especially on the zone read, and hopefully we'll get the consistency to continue. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, today's game on to the second quarter we go from Paulson, tied at 7 here on ESPN+. Plus. Second quarter underway, and Caleb Hood makes a catch and tackled at the 20 to get the Eagles out of a tough situation. Danny Wall, David Hovey, and Whitney Hayward fun hand for homecoming between Georgia Southern and UL Monroe. So on third down, Davis Brin finds his main man, Caleb Hood, second reception of the day. First down from the 20. J.J. McAfee in motion. Handoff. Jalen White cuts outside. He's got some room. White across the 40, taken down at midfield. What a 30-yard run for the senior White. And he is just so dynamic. Look at defensive coordinator Vic Koenig. Wasn't expecting that from White on the outside. The defense did a good job when the Eagles were pit at the four the first time, but now the Eagles are rolling. Quick throw on the outside, pass is caught. This is Derwin Burgess. Gets a gain of about five. But David, what have you seen from this Eagles offense? What I've seen is exactly what they need to do. Davis Brent is at his best when they're able to run the football well and they're able to get quick passes. When you have a back like Jalen White, you have to feed him. A lot of design runs. You're not seeing the RPOs that George Southern usually runs as much. And Brian Ellis told us that. He said, look, we are going to run a lot more design run plays for Jalen White and O.J. Arnold. And White so far, eight carries, 64 yards in the first half. Brand another run on the outside. And that's David Badinga, freshman, who's really stepped up offensively for the Eagles. Embarrassment of riches. You're talking about White, Arnold, now Badinga. Brian Ellis, the offensive coordinator, has been so pleased that there are some freshman players that have been able to step up throughout the year and can plug and go with the rules that a freshman can play at least four games and retain their redshirt eligibility. Bryn looking for a shot downfield, intercepted, was looking for McAfee. Instead, it is picked off by the Warhawks. Lou Tillery, his first interception on the year in the second turnover for Georgia Southern in this game. This is the one knock on Davis Brin. At times, he's prone to make some bad decisions. Lou Tillery comes off of his man, Derwin Burgess, and he just snags that one out of the air. That's a great read, because he's on a completely different man. Sees the throw a little too lofty. Those turnovers, ULM, two of them now. Well, Brian Nellis talked about the turnover and some of the plays that Bryn does. And he said, you know, sometimes that's just on coaching. That's on me. And I have to do a better job to put Bryn in a situation to succeed. And that wasn't a bad play looking for McAfee. But no. as you mentioned, Tillery coming off of Burgess just saw it right there out in front. It's great defense. And Bryn has to recognize that, put more sting on it. First down from the 24. Pass outside. Caught to Nolan Quinlan. Yeah, won't Quinlan. get any yards. Quinlan could be an X factor for this Warhawks squad, and I mean, out of tight end position, career 49 receptions of 467 yards. If they can find a way to get him involved in the pass game, it's going to help out this QB a lot. So look at this back at quarterback, Blake Murphy. Lined up with Bennett Galloway as the running back. Murphy goes out of the pocket, starts to run, and gets taken down across the 28-yard line. That's exactly what you get from Murphy. If nothing's there, he's got the springs to jump and make a run, get at least four or five yards. We were not expecting Blake Murphy to be in this game. We talked to the coaches all about Jaya Wright. 
No, I mean, this is very surprising. Third and seven. Georgia, so Georgia Southern showing the blitz right now. We'll see if they drop back in coverage. Murphy, pocket collapse and gets it out in time. And across the middle, once again, Tyrone Howell gets the midfield. Murphy knew he had to stay in the pocket just a second longer. Watch this. He waits, sidearms that slant route. Murphy's showing something here, Danny. Indeed, and the same with Tyrone Howell, his third reception. Freshing it down from the Warhawks at the 49. Makes the check. Watson Trent showing the blitz. Murphy, quick throw to the outside, incomplete. Threw it too low for Howell. Look at Matt Kubik, the offensive coordinator and the quarterbacks coach. He'll know more than anybody as to what the decision making was in the switch between Wright and Murphy. Must have saw something in practice. I mean, Wright had one of his best games against App State. He could have been Sunbelt Player of the Week if they get that win. Murphy rolling right on second down, going to throw it back near side. Flag on the play, Quinlan. Gets a couple of yards, but that may be going back. The quick flag that was thrown out. I think ineligible receiver. Holding. The left tackle Stacy Wilkins called for holding, and referees saw it clear as day after the catch by Quinlan. I thought there was a chance that they called 72 for being beyond the line of scrimmage. Clearly, he's not. That's an obvious hold. Great call by the ref. And Wilkins just grabs his man. Second and 20. Murphy. Oh, good throw and a catch made by Bugs Mortimer. He gets back to midfield. Going to be a gain of 11. They want to get Murphy out of the pocket as much as they can. He does best on the run. Good job by Mortimer to somehow squeeze that in. Sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Be a gain of 12 instead. Those third down conversions is a big part of this game. Warhawks so far two for four on third downs. Murphy, pocket collapse, and he gets taken down. Nowhere to go, got ate up. Isaac Walker was there first, followed by Justin Rhodes. That brings up fourth down for ULM. Oh my goodness, that offensive line got swallowed. I don't think there was one player who had a great block. Look at this, the pressure inside. Nothing for Murphy to do and nowhere to go. Great pressure, and that's what you're getting from this D-line. You have so many different players that can step up. See if Derek McCormick can send this ball about as far as the previous two times. Instead, it goes out of bounds. So the Eagles will have good field position. When we come back after the break, under nine minutes to go in the second quarter, still tied at seven between Georgia Southern and Ewell Monroe on ESPN+. Back on ESPN+, we're tied at seven. The Eagles offense getting ready to make their way back on the field. You see the wide receivers coach, B.J. Johnson, trying to get the team in the linemen, some of the other receivers, in order but David, what's going to be the focus on this next drive for the Eagles? Well, protect the football first and foremost. Davis Brand, you can't have a turnover near the red zone like he had, and then also continue to establish the run. And correction, it's actually Darius Eubanks, yeah. Yeah. safeties coach. The Eagles will have it at the 40. Davis Brent on first down, play action. 
Taking a deep shot down the field. Has, oh no! Almost caught, but out of the hands of Jet Thompson. And we'll send it down to our sideline reporter, Whitney Hayward, for more on this Eagles offense. Danny, although that catch was not caught by Jet Thompson, that's exactly the kind of play that Brian Ellis really wants to see his offense try and attempt. He said after the UL or the JMU loss, excuse me, that looking at himself, he wished he would have tried to be a little more explosive. He, th he thought that was what his offense was lacking, was those explosive plays. And he said, when you look at the JMU loss last year, or the JMU win last year, excuse me, the sole reason that they stayed in it and beat them was because of those explosive plays. So I think in a day like today, he'd almost rather see those attempts not be made than not tried at all. Thanks, Whitney. And J.C. French came in at quarterback for a design run. Seems like Brian Ellis using all the weapons offensively today. Ellis has used French a little bit in the run game. French has quite the arm as well. Well, he has been living up to what he mentioned Trying to be more explosive in the first half. Third and four. Bryn throws and has Caleb Hood for an Eagles first down. It's across midfield. Go to your safety valve. When in doubt, Caleb Hood somewhere on the field. Bryn, like I said, he's best with these short, quick throws. When you have a player like Hood on the perimeter, he's usually going to be open. Hood will come out for this play. First down in Warhawk territory at the 46. Brin, plenty of space in the pocket, taking for another deep shot. And he has Jalen Borden. And Borden really stepped up last week against James Madison in the absence of Derwin Burgess. Transfer from Pitt, and he's got tons of talent and great speed. Found the cushion in that zone right there. Twenty-three yard reception by the pit transfer Borden had five catches for 40 yards last week against James Madison. Eagles from the 23 go into the end zone to Thompson. No incomplete. A flag will be out on the play. Pass intended for number 24, Joshua Thompson. There is a flag on the play. There was a lot of hand fighting going on over there. AJ Watts. The one in coverage. That'll move the Eagles 15 yards and in the red zone. Another fade route from the slot. Not much there, really. It was before that. Watch didn't get his head turned around, clearly grabbing the receiver. From the eight on first down. Bryn, give it to White. White pushes his way through, tackled at the two. Keep pounding it in. This is when you want to protect the football the most. Seven minutes to go in the first half. The Eagles looking to take the lead. Five plays so far on this drive. will be the six coming up. Bryn under center. From the two. The toss to White. Touchdown, Eagles. That is a Brian Ellis play call right there. Turwin Burgess is lined up as your fullback. Then you have Jalen White coming to the other side. I mean, so many tricks from this offense. White on the perimeter, able to seal it. Six plays, 60 yards, 2 and 35 off the clock. Georgia Southern, after having a challenging opening drive and even a drive that resulted in a pick by Bryn. The Eagles that remain resilient and go into Jalen White. As Coach Ellis mentioned, wanting to get the ball to White more in this game, and they have. Good by, good by Michael Lance. 14-7 Eagles with 6-14 to go. More when we come back after the break on ESPN+. Plus.
It's all about how you respond to adversity. That's what the Eagles have done, not just in this game, but after last week's loss against JMU, Whitney Hayworth has more. Danny, obviously you saw that pick happen, but like you said, how they responded, and be it a run or a pass, the Georgia Southern offense likes to be aggressive. And you know that by a saying on their whiteboard in the offensive staff room that says nobody wins being scared of losing. Coach Ellis told us yesterday that it's the way Georgia Southern lives and the way that they play. And while it may not always go our way, just like it didn't go for Davis Brent a moment ago, they're going to be aggressive, run or pass, and come back no matter what. Thanks, Whitney. Offensive coordinator Brian has had a lot written on his whiteboard that we got to take a glance at when we yeah. talked to him ahead of this game. He had some uh, initials as well for some phrases, ones that we can't really repeat, but it all <laughs> makes an impact on how the Eagles can respond. And they've done that so far in this game, leading 14 to seven. Now, how will the Warhawks respond, David, following that Eagles touchdown by Jalen White? There's no question about it. They have to find a way to establish the run. They have one rushing yard. Let me repeat that. One rushing yard in this game right now, Isaiah Woolard has to be better. You have to get right involved in the run game more. This is what the Warhawks pride themselves on, is running the football. Yes, the passing game is working, but again, if you can't establish the run, it's going to be a long day. Interesting, Dave. You say the passing game is working. However, the Warhawks have gone with two quarterbacks, right. Jaya Wright and Blake Murphy. So if the passing game is working, why go with your third-string quarterback early in this game? To be honest, I don't have a great answer for you. <laughs> I mean, Jaya Wright, 7 for 8, 84 yards. Holding call on Michael Batten for the Warhawks on the return. And that's going to hurt. Talk about responding. We're going to get hit it even further back. And the Warhawks will start this drive. And the ball in place at the seven. Taste of their own medicine now. And they were the ones pinning Georgia Southern back, but now. You're playing within your own 10. This is a big drive, Danny, for ULM. Six minutes to go in the half. They do get the ball to start the third quarter also. On first down, Jaya Wright back in at quarterback. He hands it off to Hunter Smith, a short game. So when it comes to specific drives, like this one for the Warhawks, you want to go with your veteran and Wright. Absolutely. I mean, Wright has more experience, of course. And again, he has put together some good performances throughout the season. Warhawks doubling their rushing yards total after that game. Yeah. <laughs> Gain of one there <laughs> by Hunter Smith. But as we give credit to the front seven from the Eagles. Wright throws. Almost intercepted by the Mel Hickman. And you're seeing Hickman guarding Tyrone Howe now in this drive. Well, what a jump by Hickman. I remember watching him before the season started, and I said it. He is going to be special this season. It's because of plays like this, anticipating the route. I mean, right stare down Howe on that play. You have to look off your DBs. And Demel Hickman wanted that one back. He knew he had a chance to get six. Third and long. Right. Pressure! He's taken down. The ball is loose, and the Eagles have it. What a response from the Eagles defense this time. Isaac Walker. Isaac Walker with the takeaway. What well, was one of the keys to victory, Danny? It was takeaways. And Georgia Southern defense getting that done. Wright had nowhere to go again. Also, if you noticed, Howell was double teamed on the play. And Georgia Southern was not hiding it. You scoop it up. This front seven, and particularly this front four for Georgia Southern, is one of the most dominant in the Sun Belt. Eagles defensive coordinator Brandon Bailey. One of his keys are three turnovers every game. And when the Eagles have gotten at least three turnovers, they've come out victorious. You can look at their four wins so far this season. So wasting no time, the Eagles will have it on the two. Brynn under center at the goal line. Jalen White, touchdown Georgia Southern. Touchdown Georgia Southern. Touchdown Jalen White. 
This is good old-fashioned bully ball right now. Brian Ellis is not hiding what he's trying to do. He's running the football with Jalen White. A single back formation, you have two tight ends to the right side. Instead, they go to the left, and when you got Pishon Wembley and Brian Miller in front of you, good things are probably gonna happen. Great job by the Eagles to capitalize. The momentum shifting back and forth throughout this first half, and the Eagles following the fumble in the first drive, and the interception by Brynn. They come out and score to tie it up, and then the defense helps out, forcing a fumble, putting it in the goal line, and Jalen White, an easy touchdown. He has two on the day. Eagles lead 21-7 following the PAT by Michael Lance. 5-12 to go in the first half. More to come after the break on ESPN+. game for Georgia Southern was all about making sure they could respond in a positive way following that loss to James Madison last week and it seemed like they responded very well even when they've made their own mistakes throughout the first half. Absolutely the adjustments you've seen Georgia Southern being okay with running the football I mean 19 attempts Davis Brand has only thrown the football 13 times Davis Brand's usually thrown it around 50 a game he's actually averaging 48 to be specific on the season so a nice sign for the running backs getting some more love. Also, Brian Ellis making it easy as far as the play calling. He said sometimes we make this game harder than it is. And Jalen White leading the way, 11 carries, 74 yards, and two touchdowns. It was an easy play following the fumble that led into White's second touchdown of the game. It was all set up by the front four of Georgia Southern and their ability to get pressure on the quarterback. I mean, watch this right here. Look at Justin Rhodes absolutely obliterate the right guard. Then you fall onto the football. All you need is three yards. Great field position. Khalil Crowder pulls from the right side. And Jalen White will walk in touchdown. That's the simplicity of this game whenever you're dominating at the line of scrimmage. You have to win the war in the trenches. And that's what the Eagles are doing. Two scores in just 63 seconds. The War Hawks will start from the 25. It's back to Blake Murphy at quarterback, and the ball is out again. And it is recovered by Georgia Southern again. This time it's Justin Myers. This is just a self-inflicted wound. I mean, they tried to go with the jet sweep. He almost pulled it back. And Murphy, you have to commit. That is just not good for the Warhawks. Credit to the Eagles for jumping on it. Coach Bowden is not going to be pleased watching that one back. I mean, that is too easy for a Georgia Southern defense that's already working you up front. For Justin Myers, first fumble recovery on the season. Two turnovers for the Eagles in this game. Can they use this second turnover in the points? The Eagles will be in the red zone starting at the 17. What a last few minutes here inside Paulson. This is the new look Brandon Bailey defense that you're seeing. They take the ball away at a high clip. Over at Buffalo, they were seventh in the nation with takeaways when Bailey was there. Jalen White in at running back, first down, Bryn. Screen pass to White, gets a block from J.J. McAfee. How about down the outside? And I know that was a great catch and run by White, but the tight end group this season for Georgia Southern is stacked. It is stacked, and now you bring back Keaton Upshaw, who's starting to get going, transfer from Kentucky. You have so many guys you can look to. An embarrassment of riches. Every skill position group on this team for Georgia Southern, it's really three deep. A gain of three off the reception from White. Bryn throws to the end zone, the upshot, touchdown Eagles! Right on cue, the tight ends putting in work for Georgia Southern. How about that? As we talk about the tight ends and Keaton Upshaw, he runs a route to the near side boundary. And Bryn just waits. You have enough time in the pocket, you can do that. Soft zone coverage, nobody on the back end. 
Two Warhawk turnovers. And overall, three plays from Georgia Southern, resulting in two touchdowns. First, it was Jalen White. Then the pass from Davis Brand, the key nutshell, 14-yard reception. PAT is good by Michael Lance. It is 28-7 Eagles over the Warhawks on homecoming. 4.28 to go in the first half. More to come on ESPN+. Plus. Georgia Southern starting to roll in the second quarter, 28 to seven over ULM on ESPN Plus. Danny Wall, David Hovey, and Whitney Hayworth on hand. Back-to-back -back turnovers from the Eagles defense resulting in back-to-back -back scores. Gus having a good time with it as well. And, and a touchback ULM will have from the 25. Let's go to Whitney Hayworth with more on the Eagles tight ends and running backs. Danny, it sure is nice to see healthy tight ends and healthy running backs for Georgia Southern. Despite their loss at James Madison last weekend, Coach Helton said it was so great to see what a two-back and a two-tight end package can look like in the likes of Jalen White and particularly Keaton Upshaw. And I, I'm pretty sure we're seeing that 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 uh, two-back and two-tight end package today. What do you all say? I agree with it. It's been working out. We saw some great blocking from the tight ends and J.J. McAfee and then resulting in a touchdown catch by Keaton Upshaw. Let's see how ULM responds here. Jaya right back at quarterback. Isaiah Ward up the middle. Gets a big game, but a flag is out. This one's likely coming back. That is a tough break for ULM. Finally a sign of life on the running game. And it's on the center. Zaria McGill called for holding. And right now, David, ULM in the negatives in their running game. Negative 13 yards right now. Brandon Bailey is saying, hey, if you're going to beat us, it's going to have to be through the air. They are forcing Jaya Wright to throw the football, this entire ULM staff. And Tyrone Howell, he's now being bracketed. You're seeing two players over his way most of this game now. Credit to the adjustments in game made by defensive coordinator Brandon Bailey. And look at this. The Eagles have played some clean football and another flag out. And they have spoke too soon. This could be on Georgia Southern. Right on cue. Mention how the Eagles were playing clean, but the flag on Reed Deadman. After the penalty, first down and 12 yards to go from the 23 yard line. First and 12. Four minutes to go in the first half. Right, hands off to Woolard. And Woolard slides in for about a game of a yard. How do you get the running game going if you're the Warhawks, David? They got to try and find a way on the edge. When they were running those jet sweeps, it was keeping the defense honest. The linebackers weren't able to pitch inside. You go back to that first, and then you go with the inside zone. ULM, they like to run a lot of zone reads, but Wright also hasn't gotten going in the run game. Right, throws around the middle on second down, incomplete. Great coverage by Shamar Bartholomew. Bartholomew actually leads the Sunbelt Conference with six pass breakups entering this game. He had a big game as well against JMU. I believe it was three pass breakups. And it's because of stuff like that. He's a rangy defensive back, great in man coverage. And he's a guy coming off an ACL tear from a year ago. Finally feels like he's confident in that knee. And he looks really good. Arrived to Georgia Southern over the summer, a transfer from Northwestern State. Third and nine for the Warhawks. Play clock at five. Right. Taking a deep shot, intercepted by the Eagles. And it's TJ Smith down the sideline. He's trying to take it to the house, gets taken out inside the 10. That is the third Eagles turnover in the first half.
takeaways, not giveaways. That was one of the keys. And right here, Jaya Wright is staring down his receiver. That is too easy for TJ Smith. I mean, he is looking at Wright's eyes, and it's very obvious where he's going with the football. That high safety look, you got to have to look him off first and then go there. The defense for Georgia Southern just taking over this second quarter. That is the third straight turnover from ULM. That's what a great front four also does. It puts pressure on the QB, and they start to make some throws that are uncharacteristic. More red zone positioning. First down from the nine for the Eagles. Brand to White, he gets taken down from behind. Earl, Earl Barquette Jr. Making that play. The loss of three yards for the Eagles. And that's the biggest difference right yep. there, the points off the turnovers, David. Absolutely, great field position too. Under three minutes to go in the first. Burgess in motion. Bryn gonna throw, has a man, oh! Burgess couldn't hang on, incomplete. This was a great route from Burgess. He acted like he was going outside, then cut back in. Bryn oh. lays it on him. That is just a drop. That's a mental mistake right there. Yeah, that's unfortunate because that ball was thrown perfectly and Burgess set it up perfectly with the route. Eagles, not perfect, but highly efficient on third downs. Four for five in the first half. Bren throwing the white, and white taken down at the nine. And even though the Eagles can get a touchdown, they'll bring out the field goal unit for three. And this is a good sign for ULM to at least hold Georgia Southern to three points. I mean, not allowing them to tramp to the end zone again. And if they can try and score before this half, you do get the ball back to start the third quarter. Maybe make it interesting. That drop pass by Burgess, he's going to look back at that. It's yeah. going to haunt him for a minute. Yeah. I mean, he's such a good receiver. Yeah. You're not going to see him drop wide open passes very often. It's going to be a 27 yard field goal try for the Eagles. Michael Lance sends it up and right down the middle. Georgia Southern. 31 to 7 with two minutes to go in the first half. David, the biggest thing that we're seeing here, the reason why the Eagles have gotten the last 24 points in this second quarter has been because of the defense and forcing turnovers. Well, the turnovers have literally killed ULN in this first half. There's no way around it. You just can't have three straight turnovers whenever you're facing a great offense in Georgia Southern who's going to put points on the board either way. You have to protect the football. I thought ULM's best chance at making this game tough and having a chance to win would be bleeding the clock, leaning on your running game, but the front seven, front four has shut that down, so now they're forced to air the ball out. Fans here inside Paulson having a good time. Homecoming weekend. David, what's your favorite homecoming memory? Hmm. That's a great question. Um, maybe last year. Actually being right in the last booth. Year. Uh, and Emily Grace. Oh, my goodness. Winning homecoming queen. That was really cool. Yeah. I'm too old. I've had a couple of homecomings. That time has passed. But it's always good to see former friends and alumni to graduate with. Yeah. And you got to think for Georgia Southern football to have alumni come back and understanding that this university comes from a high level of success, winning six national championships in the Division I AA level, now in the Sun Belt Conference and FBS, and trying to maintain a standard of excellence on the D1 level, and that's what Coach Helton wants to bring. Just like Whitney said in the open, there's a standard that Coach Helton and the rest of this staff bring to these players in this roster. And this is a team that's finally starting to live up to that, and they're going to compete for a lot of Sun Belt championships. Warhawks started from the 25 again. Blake Murphy at quarterback, incomplete pass on first down and it seems like head coach Terry Bowden gonna have a lot of decisions to make going into the locker room as far as who's gonna be the confident quarterback going forward. 
I think that's also hurt them a lot. You don't have the continuity within this game. You keep switching out quarterbacks. There's not much of a flow. There's no rhythm, no consistency. Yeah. Second down. Murphy throws across the middle, has a man. Making his way to midfield. That is Albert Luke. Somebody else in the receiving group is going to have to step up this time. It's Luke. Great ball by Murphy. Now they run that hurry up. Especially now that Tyrone Howell is being extremely focused on, even sometimes being doubled. Yeah. Fresh set it down to the Warhawks at the 49. Murphy going to take a deep shot. 9 9 Davis makes the catch. Touchdown, ULM. But a flag is on the play, and it may be going back. That was a, would have been a big momentum shot. I think that might have been roughing the passer. Murphy got whacked after the throw. Targeting on top of that as well. So it will be a touchdown for ULM. Nana Davis making the catch and taking it to the house. A 51-yard pass from Blake Murphy. And finally, some signs of life from ULM. Now, we'll take a look here and, and see the targeting play in the rough and the passer call and see what the final verdict will be. Uh, shout out to Murphy for this throw. I mean, it's an all-out blitz. You're sending five, excuse me, six. There's not much there to me. I mean, obviously protecting the quarterback nowadays, they throw that flag if they see anything close to it. I, it's hard for me to imagine that that is targeting. The crown so, of the helmet. I mean, he's not launching yeah. into Murphy. That's the right. big key. The crown of the helmet is facing up towards the head and neck area. So that was a large fall, the redshirt freshman who is called for roughing the passer. And there you see uh, the helmet yeah, on the, helmet the front back. hitting Blake Murphy. And that's where the targeting came yeah. in hand. The rough of the passer was there with the hands placed onto the quarterback in Murphy. Still, what a great catch by Nana Davis. Well, great route, great catch. I still can't get over Murphy hanging in the pocket, though, taking this shot. Ooh. And when we saw that last angle, this might actually stand as targeting. It's a tough call because clearly there's no ill intent on that hit whatsoever. And this is this is big for Georgia Southern. A large fall. So no targeting on a lot's falls. So they'll be able to stay in this game. But nonetheless, great response from ULM, taking a deep shot like that. And that, I was a little shocked after seeing the helmet snap back from Murphy, but that's the right call. A lot's fall still in this game. That's still great for ULM though. I mean the ability for Murphy to hang in the pocket, Davis to find the opening. And I'll keep saying it. They get the ball back to start the third quarter. If they want to make a run, they're going to have to get a stop here and hopefully score when they get out of halftime. Following the PAT by Derek McCormick, 31 to 14 our score. Another look here from a different angle. I mean, my goodness, Blake Murphy took a shot and found Nana Davis for his first touchdown of the season. Man, that's big. I said another receiver is going to have to step up outside of Tyrone Howell. Well, Nana Davis might just be that guy for the Warhawks right now. Well, that will give the Warhawks some life, as you said, David. The Warhawks will get the ball to start the second half. And Head coach Terry Bowden said that if this was going to be a shootout, it's going to be a challenge for him. But it also just goes to the strength of the Sun Belt Conference and some of the competition we've been seeing as well. So tough. You saw JMU. They're 7-0 right now. Yeah. 
And they can't even win a Sun Belt Championship this year, obviously, but man, that conference is loaded. Touchback, and the Eagles will have it at the 25. It was interesting that uh, Coach Bowden referred to the Sun Belt as a miniature SEC. Yeah. I mean, being placed right here in the South where, you know, people think about Georgia, Georgia and, uh, and Alabama and Auburn and all that. But in those same states, you got teams like Georgia Southern, Georgia State, South Alabama, Troy, Yo Monroe right around the corner as well. He also said there's three seasons, football, spring football, and recruiting. That's just how the South is. If that ain't a Southern response, I don't know <laughs> what is. <laughs> 1.34 to go in the first half. Brim back in the quarterback. He hands it off to Jalen White. What a run from White up the middle. And he gets taken down at the 43-yard line. That offensive line part of the Red Sea. Jalen White could make a sandwich while he run through that hole. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> and keep in mind, Georgia Southern has all three of their timeouts. Very They're true. looking for one more score here. Brim throwing incomplete. Looking for Hood there. That was dangerous. Safety was creeping up there. It was Antoine Watts, the high safety. But ULM has two timeouts, so if they can get the ball back. Following the incompletion, second and 10 from the 43. White breaks through, and even when the hole collapses, White's able to find the way to just push his way through for some extra yards. He's so shifty and so powerful. And now we have our first timeout called by the Eagles. Box stopping at 114. Great crowd inside Paulson Stadium, and Eagles head coach Clay Helton has talked about how important it is the Finn Paulson Stadium here at home. So important, and Paulson has been electric this season. Georgia Southern still undefeated, and there's a rich history, obviously, in Statesboro, Georgia, with this beautiful place. And Coach Helton understands that, and he wants to lean into that even more. The NFL Network crew, when they were here for Coastal Carolina, said that Paulson Stadium, Statesboro, Georgia, may have been college football's best kept secret. <laughs> Having a sellout crowd in that matchup on September 30th, over 26,000, a new record in Paulson Stadium. And, and Coach Helton mentioned how, how much honor and pride from the community and when students come out, that's what they're fighting for. Yeah. That blue collar mentality that the Eagles have. Out of the timeout, third and six, good in motion. Brynn, ball is out. But quickly falling on it, Khalil Crowder. Brin got sandwiched in the back. Warhawks were only rushing three. I mean, this is just straight off the edge. Beats Bryson Broadway and goes for the football smartly. Aiden Huntington. Fourth down. Georgia Southern will use a second timeout. They were going to go for it. Or rather, it's going to be ULM calling their second timeout instead. And I'd be very shocked if the Eagles do go through with going forward on fourth. Given the field position, you're up 17. I don't really see a reason to even have a chance of ULM being able to score again before this half. So you're saying here, this is a, probably one of the very few opportunities where Georgia Southern should go conservative here. Absolutely. And Obviously, Coach Helton, Coach Ellis, they want to be aggressive. More power to them. But I just think with a 17-point lead, you can get out of halftime with that big of a lead. And you're also in a position to trust your defense here. I yeah. mean, three straight turnovers from this Eagle defense led by Brandon Bailey. If you decide to punt, and it seems like the Eagles are going to indeed punt, you can go out there and trust your defense to make another Absolutely. stop. Absolutely. Could we see a fake? Alex, <laughs> Alex Smith faked it before against Coastal Carolina. I wouldn't put it past him. And that was a him decision. He made that decision on his own out there and what he saw at the field. Ooh. 
Smith will indeed punt it downfield. And Mortimer will call it. And so close, the Eagles tried to pin it at the one. We've seen some great bounces from the punters today. That's why special teams play the factor. Absolutely. That's why I put it on there, because you can really change a game. If you can switch field position and also even have some big returns, the momentum of the game completely flips. We talked about momentum. The last drive for ULM. Blake Murphy took a deep shot finding Nana Davis. So it shows that the Warhawks can be explosive. The question is, can they be explosive with 49 seconds to go and one timeout remaining? And the last thing you want to do is give the ball up again. You have to be careful. You're seeing just quarters coverage right now. Three up front. Everybody else pinned back for Georgia Southern. They're not going to risk it. First down from the 20. Murphy throws near side, has Mortimer. Pass complete. Wide He's decision to get out of bounds, stop the clock. The Eagles are staying with this quarters formation. 45 seconds to go in the first half. Murphy gonna run, escapes the lineman. He'll get the first down and tackled hard at the end. Kadri Jackson there. Flag is on the play. Murphy just climbs up in the pocket. He ran with that one quickly. Side on the Eagles decline. First down from the 35. Clock will start after the snap. Murphy scrambles right, fires, has a man caught across midfield. And all red Luke making the catch. Hurry up offense from the Warhawks. Time still winding down under 30 seconds. Georgia Southern will use their second timeout. Nice drive put together so far. <laughs> Murphy was able to find Luke scrambled out. It was a really good job. He just sat in the middle of that zone. The Warhawks, you still have one timeout as well. So the middle of the middle of the field is still open. And also, the Warhawks can really do no wrong in terms of who they go with at quarterback because the stats have been fairly similar. Blake Murphy, actually 8 for 11, 141 yards and a touchdown. Jaya Wright. 7 for 11, 84 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. <laughs> they both played really efficient. If it wasn't for those turnovers, this game would look a lot more different. That's been the turning point. The turnovers have been from both quarterbacks. The right interception and Murphy on a couple of fumbles as well. The biggest story of this game have been the turnovers and the points off of turnovers. Georgia Southern, 17 points off of three turnovers in the first half. Murphy, scrambled out of trouble. Has to get out, lets it go, out of bounds. And there was a receiver in the vicinity, so it won't be ground, intentional grounding. I don't know how he stayed up. I mean, his athleticism. You at least want to get in field goal position, field goal range. So the officials will review to see if the knee was down. Take a look here. All right. Scrambles to his left, 
His knee's gonna drop right, oh, it's down. Yeah, and excuse me, Murphy. And the knee was clearly down, so that's gonna come back. I mean, he was surrounded by a sea of eagles. Should be a quick review. Murphy, obviously that left knee hit the ground. Well, it's maybe going to be more interesting, David, if the call says it does say that Murphy was down. The clock's going to stop start as soon as the whistle blows. Yeah. They're going to have to be lined up and ready to go. If, so if you're the Warhawks, do you burn your final time out here, or do you try to get a playoff? I mean, you try to get a playoff. You want to save that time out. You're on fringe field goal range. One more look. Great pressure from the inside. And that right knee, obviously down. Yeah. So the Warhawks, so first and foremost, Murphy's knee was down. Yep. It would have been a 10 second runoff. However, the Warhawks using their final timeout to keep the clock stopped at 21 seconds to go. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to use the timeout there. There would have been six seconds left at the least. And I mean, a first down stops the clock momentarily. So in using this final timeout and seeing that Blake Murphy's already taken a shot downfield, if you're Terry Bowden, David, are you confident in sticking with Murphy as the quarterback here? I think you have to be. He's been playing really well. He's made tough throws. That's been the difference to me is Jaya Wright is a solid quarterback, but Murphy's a quicker quarterback, and at the moment, even looks like a better thrower of the football. Ball's placed at the 43 for ULM, second and 22. Warhawks out of timeouts. The Eagles with one left. Now the officials talking something over. Murphy on second down. Screen throw on the outside to Luke. Luke weaving his way through the fenders at midfield. That was about best case scenario for the Warhawks. Picked up a lot of ground and got out of bounds. Fifteen seconds. Murphy rolling right. Throws and it's caught. But Mortimer falls out of bounds. The fourth down. You gotta expect the Warhawks to go for it here. Yeah, I mean you're not in field goal range. It's gonna have to be quick if you want to get a first down here and then try get a field goal, but nine seconds left. Again, that is going to be very tough. Stranger things have happened. On fourth down, Murphy rolling right. He's going to go to the end zone. Plenty of targets down there, and it's incomplete. Flag incomplete. 
back on the play. Triple zeros on the clock. Holding on the right tackle, Kedro Lewis, but the Eagles will decline, and that'll take us to halftime. Georgia Southern, most points scored in a quarter this season with 24 in the second. They lead 31 to 14. The defense, David, coming up strong near the end of the first half, and, and now the officials are calling for both teams to get back on the field. I wonder if they're saying they were trying to break things second. up. Something's going on over there. Previous play under further review. And that, that's shocking. You throw a Hail Mary, there was obviously, at the very most, there's one second left in the half. So they're trying to see how much time would be on the clock and seeing where the ball went down as time expired. There could be a chance we may have a second possibly left in this first half. And Georgia Southern's just kind of knee it, but I'm surprised that they're reviewing this. <laughs> so there is one second on the clock after a turnover on down for the Warhawks. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. All right. It, it, yeah. And Georgia Southern's offense will head back out. Ball be placed at the Eagles 42. I know you mentioned, David, that Brin can kneel it, but they're going to want to play Yeah, here. I thought they would just kneel it. Nah, take one more shot. Brin, quick throw to Caleb Hood. He has blockers. Still hanging on his feet. And now he gets wrapped up at the 35-yard line. And that will officially end the first half. A little stat padding. <laughs> but nonetheless, the Eagles defense, a strong performance in the second quarter, forcing three turnovers and resulting in 17 Georgia Southern points. Those points scored in a quarter this season at 24. And the run game has been effective for the Eagles, led by Jalen White. 14 carries, 93 yards, and two touchdowns. What a start in the first half for the Eagles. And Whitney Hayward is standing by with Eagles head coach Clay Helton. You love to get takeaways, three straight takeaways by your defense, but obviously a little bit of humbling experience with a 9-9 Davis touchdown. So how do you commend your defense, but also not let them be complacent in the second half? Well, the three turnovers led to a three-score lead here at halftime. Got to do a little bit of improvement in the pass game. Really doing a nice job in the rush game. Negative yards right now, but over 200 yards passing. So we got to sure up the coverage a little bit, get to the quarterback and give him some pressure. You knew you wanted to run the ball more in this game. Jalen White, two touchdowns. What can you say about his performance? Uh, we challenged the O-line and we challenged the run runners that we had to have balance in this game and so far they're doing a great job. Thanks so much. Thank you. What a first half for Georgia Southern. 31-14 to score at halftime. We'll talk first half stats and more after the break on ESPN+. Moments away from the second half kicking off inside Paulson Stadium. The Warhawks will get the ball after scoring a late touchdown to end the first half, it was Blake Murphy finding Nana Davis. And David, you heard 
from head coach Terry Bowden just trying to find some momentum going with two quarterbacks in Jaya Wright and Blake Murphy. They found success from Blake Murphy. 156 yards in the air and a touchdown. He's played great, but the negative seven rushing yards. Your ULM, this again, it's what you pride yourself on, but the Georgia Southern defense has held their hats high. Great job up front and also some more explosive plays. They're averaging around seven yards right now. They were averaging around five to six this season, the passing game. So that's another big jump. The Eagles also finding a balance in getting their running game going. Yeah. 127 yards led by Jalen White. 14 carries, 93 yards, two touchdowns. Blake Murphy in at quarterback. The start for the Warhawks in the second half. On first down, he throws far side. Catch is made by Nana Davis. He gets pushed back to the initial line of scrimmage. Curious to see if they're just going to air it out try and get back in this game. Clearly the running game is not going for you. We haven't even seen much of Isaiah Ward. He only has six carries for 20 for 12 yards, excuse me. Ward in at running back to the left of Murphy. And Hunter Smith is an explosive playmaker, but he hasn't really gotten the ball. Just two carries for two yards. Here is Woolard. Tried to push through across the 30, taking down at the 32. If you're head coach Terry Bowden, do you go with just one quarterback in Blake Murphy, or do you still switch it up trying to find some momentum between Murphy and Wright? From what I've seen from Blake Murphy, 11 for 15, 159 in the air with a touchdown. You got to keep going with him. He's also making a lot of plays with his feet on the outside. He's not doing anything wrong. Third and three. They've got to convert on this third down. Just three of 14 last week. Two of eight in the first half today. Murphy. Flag was out. False start on the right tackle. Yeah. Thank you, Tony Romo. <laughs> Ken Kedro Lewis. The right tackle on the false start. Lewis, he got off that jump quick. It's clearly a second ahead. And plays like that, I mean, third and three, it's clearly a manageable third down, but now the Eagles can pin their ears back and rush the passer. See the Eagles showing blitz. Five-man front. Four-man rush. Murphy throws in the middle. Has an open man and bugs Mortimer. Mortimer inside the 30, tries to stay through, through multiple Eagles and another big play from the Warhawks. Just layering the football right down the middle. Great protection from the O-line as well. And Bugs Mortimer, he's had a pretty good game. I think he could be the guy that steps up. That's now his fifth reception. Mortimer, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Only had four receptions entering this game. Had an increased role here today. He's got 97 yards, five receptions to be exact. Shows that the Warhawks are finding additional receivers to step up, as you mentioned, David. Play clock at five. It's first down from 19. Murphy sacked. Couldn't get past Marquez Watson Trent. Eagles brought another rusher. See from the top of your screen, Watson Trent. He's just looking for Murphy. He climbed up in the pocket too soon. He had time to wait. That's one of the most sure tacklers you're going to find in the Sun Belt, Marquez Watson Trent. A loss of four. As Murphy was taken down. However, good field position for the Warhawks, trying to find some momentum to start the second half. Murphy, far side, caught inside the 10, Nana Davis. Great scheme. Two players jump to the bottom of this route. You see that. And it leaves a wide open gap. I believe it was Powell on the outside, and that's what you get. Whenever you're doubling a receiver, somebody else is going to be open. And makes it first and goal from the eight. Jaya Wright back in. It's an interesting change here. Wright will keep. He's rolling left. He's going to keep it rolling out of bounds. 
seemed like he was potentially going to throw it to Nolan Quinlan in front before just electing to keep it himself. I don't like that. I get that Wright kind of provides some more beef. He's a bigger player. He can run between the tackles, but I mean, Blake Murphy is rolling. He can still use his legs at a high rate. You go from a 5'11 freshman in Blake Murphy to a 6'1 graduate in Wright. Maybe he's going for experience here to get some touchdowns. Yeah, but your quarterback's rolling. Second down. Wright throws to the end zone. One on one coverage. Incomplete. And Demel Hickman was covering Tyrone Howe. Howe came down with the ball, but was out of bounds. Hickman was smothering him. Howe just runs a little fade route. Hickman doesn't even get his head turned around. Oh, and he got that toe in. Quick challenge? Well, they're out of challenges. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> lost, that, <laughs> lost that challenge in the first half. And that's how it can play a factor deep in a game. Yeah. Because that's when you wish you had a challenge to look at. Play clock winding down. Third and goal. Right. Pressure. Gets out of it. Stays on his feet down the sideline. Now goes out. Isaac Walker was around. Alongside Kadri Jackson. That brings up fourth down for the Warhawks. And the Warhawks. I thought for a second they were going to stay out there and kick the field goal now. First time we'll see the field goal unit today. And again, I get that Jaya Wright has the experience and is the bigger player in the red zone, but Blake Murphy is balling. I mean, there's no way around it. He looks great. He's throwing the football at a high clip. It's hard for me to imagine why you would take him out. Jared McCormick. 27-yard field goal attempt. Got it through. So the Warhawks do score on their opening drive. They take 4-22 off the clock in eight plays. And within two touchdowns, Georgia Southern will get the ball when we come back. Actually, a nine-play, 65-yard drive, taking 457 off the clock. Eagles will get the football when we return on ESPN+. Thirty-one seventeen Eagles lead. ULM getting a field goal in their opening drive of the second half. Head coach Terry Bowden, while pleased with getting a field goal on the first drive, he mentioned with Whitney David that they have to force Georgia Southern to just field goals going forward. You can't trade points. You're down 14 now. You have to be able to string together some stops, maybe turn the ball over. But ULM, I mean, the offense has looked good. The passing game, 228 yards from Murphy, 84 from Wright. That's 312 in total. I don't know about you, David, but if I'm Coach Bowden, I may want to stick with Murphy going forward. Absolutely. I don't even, to me, it's not a question. In the return here for the Eagles is David Badinga breaking a tackle on the outside and tackled at the 30. Davis Brin will make his way out to start the second half. And the unique thing about Brin, David, is that he is lined up with some of the best quarterbacks in college football in terms of passing yards per game. You got Michael Penix Jr., <laughs> Shador Sanders has been a national story all year long, Drake May from North Carolina. That just shows that Brin's an elite company up top. Yeah, that is quite the company. You're talking about Shador Sanders, who is definitely going to be a top five pick, Jay Daniels, Michael Penix. All of these guys are ballers. Fowler Nicolosi, also a Colorado State. Jalen White on first down, a short game. How is the Pac-12 in their final year Man. having so much exciting football going on this season? I, I've been saying it. it. It's sad for the Pac-12 considering you look at it, you got Oregon, you have Washington, USC, all these teams, and it's like, dang, this is the last year of it. <laughs> Even Colorado, they the record hasn't been there, but it's been exciting just to watch Coach Prime and company. Bryn throws and has Caleb Hood. But almost, you talk about the strength of the Pac-12, we also have the strength of the Sun Belt that's been electric this season as well. I mean, the Sun Belt has had some, some incredible matchups and some teams on a hot streak to start the season as well. And we heard Coach Bowden talk about how the, the Sun Belt is a miniature SEC conference and probably the 
premier group of five conference in football. Brynn taking a deep shot. Incomplete looking for Burgess. Whitney Hayworth has more on the Sun Belt Conference. You all are talking about the Pac-12 and realignment. Well, you look at the Sun Belt and the realignment that they had over the last few years, adding James Madison, ODU, Marshall, Southern Miss. I mean, even Georgia Southern and Appalachian State years ago into the Sun Belt. I talked with uh, Coach Kubik of ULM earlier this week, and he was talking about his experience when he's been in the league. He entered the league in 2016, and he said it's been fun to watch the conference grow. He said the good thing about the Sun Belt is they're not chasing markets, but they're chasing programs. And he said it's how a conference should be aligned. And you're really seeing the Sun Belt shine in the group of five as of late. Thanks for some trickery there from the Eagles. Incomplete pass by Bryn. But the last six, seven, eight years has been incredible for the Sun Belt and rebuilding and rebranding. Georgia Southern App State joining at the same time in 2014. You had Georgia State in there, Coastal Carolina, Southern Miss. James Madison, Old Dominion, I mean, this has been a great season, and JMU's undefeated right now. They are really good. You want to talk about a great front four. JMU has it. They can get after the passer. Brynn on third and ten. Throws in the middle. And he has a man complete to Burgess, taking down or sliding down at the 45. And even the next game for Georgia Southern, the midweek matchup Thursday night against Georgia State. What a season the Panthers have had. Yeah, Darren Granger is legit. He's a great quarterback. That's going to be a fun matchup right there. Yeah. Jalen White on first down. The drive continues for the Eagles. A short game before wrapped around by numerous Warhawks. And it seems, David, Jalen White is back to pure form. Scary for the Panthers on Thursday because you get Jalen White going in the run game. This offense, they're already elite. It just takes them to a whole nother level. Not to mention O.J. Arnold. And Davis Brin after the catch by Burgess, now over 200 yards on the day. Only a gain of two for White. He'll get it again on second down. Tried to burst through the hole. It collapsed. And he is tackled at the 37. Somebody we haven't really highlighted that I think deserves more love is Chandler Strong. You're talking about a redshirt freshman taking the duties at center, which is a really tough position. He's handled it so well. We've seen multiple runs right up the middle with huge gaps. A big part of that is because of the way Strong has been playing. See what Strong can do on third and one. J.C. French in at quarterback. He's going to keep. And we'll get the first down. You mentioned, David, that offensive coordinator Brian Nellis has some plays designed for J.C. French to get him in. Did it again here. I think it's funny that they're using French as a runner because you look at him throw the football, and it is insane. Coach Ellis said it to us. He is the most talented quarterback on the roster, and it's not even close. His exact words when talking about J.C. French, this guy can spin it, and he is going to be dangerous next year. That sets up a, a great future for the Eagles. Trips right on first down from the 34. Pass is tipped. Incomplete. This is a nice drive from the Eagles right now. Just stringing along some passes and some runs, mixing it up and bleeding that clock. If you're looking at Jalen White, 17 attempts on the ground. He had 10 in total last week against JMU. Also a second 100-yard rushing game this season. Looking four yards. Brin on second down, throws near side, has Hood. Hood trying to get to the 30. He got pushed back about two yards. Already midway. Under approaching six minutes to go in the third quarter. That just shows you how the running game has played a factor in this game for both sides, really. Yeah. The Warhawks need a stop. Third down and six. You got to make Davis Brent uncomfortable. From the 30. Quick throw, and it seemed like Jalen Borden was not ready to make a play. That brings up fourth down. Borden was open, just miscommunication. Brent sees Borden, he's running across on a seam, and Borden just doesn't get his head turned around. That is the right decision from Davis Brent. 
Michael Lands will be out to take a 47-yard field goal. He's four of six this season on field goals between 40 and 49 yards. From the right hash, and it's blocked. What a response from the Warhawks. They get a field goal offensively, and the defense steps up after a lengthy drive from the Eagles. It was a 12-play drive from Georgia Southern that gets halted and results in a blocked field goal. Well, look at Michael Batten. He just jumps over the lineman to get his hands on that one. Great anticipation, ULM. Big special teams play. Michael Batten. Batting down the football. <laughs> ULM will get it back on offense after the break on ESPN+. Plus. Go to start the third quarter and a turnover by the Warhawk. This is what head coach Terry Bowden talked about with the Warhawk way. Yeah, I mean, they want to be able to bring up not just great football players, but great men, world-class leaders, as you see. Terry Bowden, he's a great coach. He's a great guy, a great mentor to his players. On first down, Murphy, that quarterback, lets it go, intercepted. No! Out of the hands of Watson Trent. And he may have gotten banged up there, couldn't hang on to the football. <laughs> Very poor decision from Blake Murphy. You got to throw that ball out. And then Watson Trent on the ground. Good job evading Justin Rhodes, but there's three Ooh. Eagles all in the same direction. You see Watson Trent took one right below the chest. I think he got the wind knocked out of him yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Took a hard shot trying to hang on to the ball. It'll have been the fourth turnover from the Eagles defense. To see Blake Murphy's numbers, he might earn the starting job going forward. I wouldn't be shocked. That was one of the few mistakes I've seen from him all game. Oh, look, look at the safety up top. Showing blitz. Second and 10 from the Warhawks, 45. Murphy. Far side caught, Quinlan doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage, loss of one. Quinlan just has not been able to get open this game. He's a great vertical tight end. They like to throw the ball to him in tight spaces, but they've not been able to free him up at all. You go for a deep shot on third and 10, third and 11. I think you tried to. The Eagles have left the middle of the field open a lot throughout this match. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Murphy Hang in the pocket and wait for somebody to cross. The Eagles showing pressure. Four-man rush. Murphy across the middle, incomplete. And right on cue, David, even though the Warhawks went through the middle, the defense was ready. Yeah, he was looking for Luke. Great defense and great hands by the Georgia Southern secondary. They dropped two linebackers back in coverage. Just mixing up the look. A good three and out from the Eagles following the blocked field goal. Caleb Hood deep to receive. Braxton Gilbo on the punt. That does not go far. Now rolling about the 23, 24 yard line. It's where the Eagles will have the football with 4.36 to go in the third. When we come back from our commercial break, the Eagles 31-17 lead over the Warhawks on ESPN+. There's a lot of veteran players on this Georgia Southern team to lead the way and wearing the number zero jersey. This week, it's left tackle Brian Miller. Whitney Hayworth has more. Danny, Brian Miller is what Clay Helton refers to as a salty dog, he says. Now, while he can't wear number zero on the field because he's a lineman, he was, he was honored with the zero this week. A selfless, a tough, a disciplined, united player is what they define number zero as. And Coach Helton said there is no saltier dog than Brian Miller. 
34-year-old Brian Miller, he said at that. Someone who can lead his players home and to victory. Couple of extra years put on Brian Miller, but that just shows how much he's meant to this Georgia Southern program, David. And the Salty Dog nickname. I always wanted to know what that, that meant officially. Bryn throwing outside to J.J. McAfee. Oh. He spins like a helicopter. The ball came out. It seems like McAfee got back on it in time. He will be short of a first down. He got lifted by two different Warhawks right here. He tries to cut inside, lowers the shoulder. Oh my goodness, ring around the Rosie. Good job grabbing that football. Because that would have been a fumble. He was not down. So I need to know exactly what a salty dog is. Let's send it back down to Whitney for more. All you got to do is go to Google, Danny. But <laughs> it's true. Salty Dog goes back to midshipman days. It's a sailor out at sea, long days, long nights, showing true, gear, true grit, similar to Georgia Southern, blue collar, that mentality that just go, going through anything. And for the midshipmen, it's getting their sailors home, getting their ships home, no matter the storm that they're going through. The Eagles will call a timeout their first of the half. And the salt comes from all the from the ocean and the water and the travels that, that a captain goes on. So you learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Coach Helton, he's always got some great insight, some, just something to laugh about. They got some about. fun nicknames. Yeah. I, I learned, even the coordinator, Brandon Bailey, nicknamed uh, Coach Helton the Big Horse. I've heard that a little oh. bit, Big Horse coming through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no matter what, it just seems like Coach Helton in his year and a half was midway through his second season. He has embodied the blue-collar Georgia Southern way and wanted to bring a standard of excellence, bring this program back to championships like they had in, in Division I AA. I think it's funny. You, you come from USC, Southern California, the glitz and glamour, down to Statesboro, Georgia, where got, it's rough and rowdy. We got to remember Coach Helton's a Southern boy. Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah, coming back to his roots. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> Out of the timeout, third and two. Ball went out. What happened there? Well, Burgess just dropped it. It was a little bubble screen. Wow. Or rather, that might have been Cobb, but the receiver just dropped the football. That was Burgess. He had a drop pass in the end zone. That would have been that third touchdown after the third turnover, and it turned into a field goal. Yeah, that's right. Uncharacteristic from Burgess. Nothing going for the Eagles. Alex Smith back out the punt. Bugs Mortimer deep to receive. Bounce inside the 30 and then roll out of bounds. 3.08 remaining in the third quarter. David, the Helton and Bowden name is so iconic within college football. Let's send it back down to Whitney Hayward with more. Hey, Danny. I'm actually in the middle of listening to Coach Ellis give his wide receivers and his quarterbacks a really good speech. I talked to you earlier about being coached is to be loved. And he said, listen, don't hang your heads when a play go doesn't go your way. Pick it up. We've still got more to play for this game. So I was too in tune to that, to, <laughs> that I didn't actually hear what you were saying before you tossed it down to me, I'll be honest. Well, well, Whitney, we appreciate you doing your job, checking in with Coach Ellis, and we kind of heard him a little bit furious after, oh my goodness, big run here for the Warhawks. The pass completed to Quinlan. Warhawks are rolling. We'll come back down to you in a minute, Whitney, but right now, Blake Murphy, David, He's finding an open man in Quinlan. You mentioned a vertical threat. Goes down the field. Well, Watson Trent got sucked into the perimeter. Quinlan just shoots that gap right up the middle. Murphy pulls back, spits it to him. So first down in the Eagles, 45. Going back to the run game, Woolard. Nowhere to go. <laughs> The run game, they have the vertical threats going. Now you have to find a way to get some push on that offensive line. But this is a big possession for the Warhawks. 
You need points on this drive. With a loss of one, the running game has been non-existent for the Warhawks today. Three receivers and a tight end set for Murphy. And now Wooler getting some yards inside the 40. Some positive sign. That's a good look. Murphy holds on to that, then gives it up. That zone read, you really haven't seen much of in this game because they had to throw the football. Under a minute and a half to go in the third. Third and five for the Warhawks. Keep your eye on your top of your screen, Tyrone Powell. Murphy instead elects to run it. Woolard. Did he get the first down or is he short? And if he is short, do you go for it if you're the Warhawks? Oh, they're going for it. That run play was the sign that this is four down territory. You got two plays to get five yards. Fourth and two. Warhawks 50% on fourth downs this season. Five for 10. They did not convert a fourth down. 0 for 1 against Texas State last week. Murphy, oh my goodness, gets out of traffic, but the pass is incomplete. Second turnover on downs, because the first one was the last play, or the next to last play in the first half for the deep shot in the end zone. Murphy somehow kept this play alive. He was trying to go to Darian Wiley. The near side is man coverage, but Wiley got locked up. And there, Murphy nowhere to throw the ball to. So the Eagles will have 30 seconds here in the third quarter. From 37, Brand handed off to White. White took a hard shot at the 40. That pushed back some. Eighteenth carry for White. The Eagles get this playoff in the third. They will not. Bryn too late on the snap. And that will end the third quarter. Only a field goal scored by the Warhawks in third. It's a two-score game, 31-17. As we go to the fourth, you're watching Sun Belt Conference football on ESPN+. Beautiful aerial view of the prettiest little stadium in America, Paulson Stadium, as the fourth quarter set to begin between Georgia Southern and ULM. 31-17, the Eagles with the lead, however, did not score in the third quarter after scoring the most points in the second quarter with 24. The Eagles will have the football at the 41, at second down and six. Davis Brin. Pocket collapsed and finds an open man. There's Keaton Upshaw. Not called his name since he scored a touchdown in the second quarter. Brent finding ways to get him involved. I give credit to the Warhawk defense in that third quarter and the Georgia Southern defense. Only three points scored in total. Both sides looked great on the defensive end. The main thing is, can Georgia Southern maintain this lead in the fourth? And close this one out with a win. Dalen Cobb in motion on first down. First down run, tackled at the 50. It's a gain of three for Jalen White. This is Jalen White's sixth career 100-yard rushing game in his career with the Eagles. And if Jalen White didn't go through some injury problems, that number would be much higher, I guarantee you. Talking about an elite running back with NFL potential. Second down. Fred. All kinds of time in the pocket. Is this a bad throw to White? I don't know if Brent just kind of underthrew it or just 
at a last second decision. David, what do you think? Well, this is point blank range. He just missed it. <laughs> I mean, there's not really a breakdown of that. So no need for an expert analysis, just straight no, up. No, he just <laughs> missed the throw. Well, that brings up third and seven. Bren has not thrown the ball as much as he has in the first six games of the year. Just 16 for 30 now, 214 yards. Eagles 6 and 11 on third down, third and seven. Bren, ball is loose. And the Warhawks, they can't scoop it up. Now they have it. Earl Baquette, and it's still loose. <laughs> My goodness, it's hot potato out there on the field. It goes out of bounds. Lou Tillery came up in the end. Where is it going? What in the world? <laughs> I mean, butter on everybody's hands. Great pressure. It goes back to the Eagles. Because at the end, it went out of bounds. But the Eagles still got the punt here. That's unfortunate for ULM. You could have had great, great field position just jump on the football if they're trying to take it back for a touchdown just jump on the football that that's a big time mistake trying to make an impact play they, they are like. but trying to go for a scoop and score you can have the ball on Georgia Southern's 32 yard line you jump on the football that that hurts I can kind of say the offense has been non-existent for the Eagles in the second half as Alex Smith boots that one deep Mortimer recovers, and he gets tripped up. And he's frustrated. He thought he had a big run. Things starting to heat up in Paulson. Warhawks get the football back when we come back on ESPN+. Plus. A lot of history between the Bowdens and the Helton. Listen down to Whitney Hayworth to learn more. Danny, we certainly couldn't go through this game without talking about the Bowden family or the Helton family, two well-known names within college football. You take a look at the graph graphic of the Bowden family, starting with Bobby Bowden, who coached at Florida State for so many years. You've got, obviously, Terry here at ULM and Tommy and Jeff. I mean, I look at that graphic, and I just see my childhood flash before my <laughs> eyes. Such great coaches, such great history, so many stories. And then you also look at the Helton family, starting with Kim Helton, obviously Clay Helton here at Georgia Southern, and Tyson over at Western Kentucky. Talking with both, both Coach Clay Helton and Coach Terry Bowden, such great stories between all of them. And all, I think we could talk for hours and <laughs> listening to them over the last few days as they told us some stories, including Coach Helton saying, you know, I grew up obviously in Gainesville, Florida, at, with my dad at Florida and then Miami. I mean, what better place can you be to be able to grow up and watch Bobby Bowden and others at work. Absolutely, and it seems like Terry Bowden's getting this Warhawks offense back in motion. Big reception from Bugs Mortimer that puts the Warhawks in Eagle territory at the 34. That was a 38-yard pass from Blake Murphy to Bugs Mortimer, the sophomore. Murphy lets it go, end zone, incomplete. <laughs> Look for Darian Wiley there. I like the shot, but going back to that last play, Bugs Mortimer, I mean, creating havoc. And this Georgia Southern defense has no answer for him specifically. He's been playing really well. Do you know how many plays you got to have and the knowledge you have in the Helton family and the Bowden family? Oh I gosh. mean, Terry Bowden may have some plays drawn up that we may have not seen in decades. Yeah. If you don't know the Bowden name, you've been living under a rock. Bobby Bowden. <laughs> One of the most heralded coaches ever, like without a question, in college football. Second and ten for the Warhawks. The handoff up the middle. Hunter Smith may have gotten a yard or two. And that's when, when you get in the fourth quarter, you really get to see those college coaching minds really come into play. Yeah, and if ULM can score on this drive, it'll make things really fun between these head coaches. Timeout was called. So it seems like both teams will talk things over. 
The Eagles using their second timeout of the half. More to come after the break. 31-14 Eagles on ESPN+. Plus. Back on ESPN+, Plus, ULM on third down and nine, trying to make it a one-score game. And the passing game has been excellent with three receivers with new career highs today, David. They got multiple options to go to. Bucks Mortimer has had a great game. He has 81 yards after the catch. That's the kind of speed he has. Not I Davis and Oliver Luke also getting involved, and it's helped out because Tyrone Powell, as we mentioned, he's been getting bracketed and doubled throughout this game. And he led by the freshman quarterback, Blake Murphy. They stay with Murphy on third down. And the pass is batted away. Couldn't catch it. And it will be ruled incomplete. Well, it's better that Murphy didn't catch that. That would have set him back yeah. a while. At least here, with incompletion, you have a chance for a field goal. It's going to be a deep field goal. 50 yards on the money. We see a large fall. The ball going off of his left <laughs> shoulder pad. So this will be the longest field goal in Derek McCormick. The 50 yarder. And he got it. Longest field goal of the year and more points for ULM. They inch their way closer and closer, an 11-point game, 31 to 20, under 12 to go. Georgia Southern will be back on offense when we come back after the break on ESPN+. Plus. It's already been a busy week in the Sun Belt Conference. South Alabama back on Tuesday, destroying Mississippi, Southern Miss, excuse me, 55 to three. And, just this past Thursday night, James Madison remaining undefeated. A 29 win against Marshall in a couple of games to start later on this evening. Coastal Carolina, Arkansas State, App State, and Old Dominion on the NFL Network in Georgia State at Louisiana. It seems like the Sun Belt gets more and more competitive every year, David. Yeah. South Alabama, they dropped 55 on ULM. It was 55 to 7. They're a great squad. Enough can't be said about JMU, Louisiana. They're a tough team. I mean, really, it's just been the East Division. Yeah. That yeah. can just be so challenging. I mean, you look at this. Coastal and Arkansas State, App and Old Dominion, that could determine the East Division so far. Because remember, even though James Madison's undefeated, they're still ineligible for a bowl yeah. game and a Sun Belt Conference championship. Yeah. Could Georgia State yeah. possibly be a powerhouse in football? They could. I mean, they're building something. They're definitely heading in the right direction. Screen pass to Jalen White on first down. White gets across the 30. Short of a first down. Georgia State rolling into town on Thursday. So will the Panthers be undefeated before they head to Statesboro? We'll see. Primetime matchup. We saw what the Eagles did against Coastal Carolina. Roll out on the outside, J.J. McAfee, first down, taken out inside the 40. It's all about defending Paulson Stadium. That's what Clay Helton preaches, and Whitney Hayworth has more. With, with 11.20 left in the fourth quarter, Georgia Southern has a little bit more work to do to, de to defend Paulson, where they are 3-0 this season. Clay Helton stresses how important the crowd can play into the game. Brandon Bailey told us the same thing yesterday when it comes down when it comes down to third down. This crowd needs to get rocking and rolling and a little rowdy if they want to get the W for the Eagles. Thank you, Whitney, trying to hang on here this 31 to 20 lead. And and then you gotta imagine how rocking Paulson would be undefeated at home, but they can finish this one out then hosting Georgia State Thursday night, prime time on ESPN2. Second and eight. Bren has to change directions. He's going to throw it out of bounds. What's Good. happened to the Eagles' defense or offense here? Well, ULM has been much better up front. They're not giving up those big runs that they were in the first half. And 
really, there's not a lot of space for receivers to go. Davis Brin, he has time in the pocket, but quickly tries to scramble out because nobody's open. And that's a shot. Usually there's a lot of receivers open for Georgia Southern. Give credit to the secondary of the Warhawks. Now a big third down. Can they get off the field? 50% on third down today. On third and long. Bryn. He gets sacked. Hit in the blind side. And there's Aiden Huntington. Looking like Aiden Hutchinson right there <laughs> off the edge. I mean, a great rip move right off the right tackle. Huntington, he can really wreak havoc. He is a nasty edge rusher when he gets to it. Transfer from Kent State. He had two and a half sacks coming into this game. Well, had another one on the season. And normally the quarterbacks have been protected under offensive coordinator Brian Ellis, but Davis Brin sacked three times today. It's Alex Smith on the punt. Mortimer back to receive. That will get an eagle bounce inside the 20. ULM down but not out. Your schedule is going to be challenging going forward. The return home, only had two home games left to go in the back half of the season. The return home next week to host Arkansas State, then travel to Southern Miss. Their final game at home, November 11th against Troy, but then Two tough matchups in the year on the road. You go to Ole Miss, yeah. and then Louisiana to finish off the year. Ole Miss, that one's going to be tough. Jackson Dart is no joke. You get to see Butch Jones against Arkansas State. Their next matchup. I've always been so intrigued with where you placed your fourth non-conference game of the year. The pass is caught on the outside on first down. Alred Luke making the reception. Because Georgia Southern started off their first four games of the season with all four to non-conference games. Yeah. Normally, some teams will play three in the beginning of the year and will have one reserve towards the end of the season. But I don't know. I, I think it's more beneficial to have it at the beginning of the year than nothing yeah. but conference games from here on out. Yeah, I agree. Second down run. Short game for Isaiah Woolard. If you were a coach, Dave, where would you want to have your, your fourth non-conference game? At the, at the beginning of the year or near the end? I don't. I wouldn't want it near the end. I, I think it'd be fine maybe in the middle of the season, maybe game seven or so. Um, I wouldn't want it at the tail end of, of my season at all. Third and four. Murphy gets out of trouble, and it's incomplete. Good coverage from Demel Hickman on Darian Wiley. That brings up fourth down. A great three and out from the Eagles defense. Three of 14 again. That's the same number they were at last week in third down conversions. If ULM strings together some third down conversions, this game would look so much different. Their defense is playing great. Shout out to Demel Hickman. But they need points. I mean, the time is dwindling away. It's only a matter of time until the Eagles start to get something going. Keep an eye out for a fake here. Braxton Gilbo on the punt. Caleb Hood to receive. He indeed boots this one deep. Wow. Going all the way back, but that will go in the end zone. So the Eagles will start the ball at the 20. So in this, second, in this second half of the season for Georgia Southern, we talked about the primetime matchup Thursday night against Georgia State here at Paulson Stadium, a matchup on ESPN2. And then the final four games of the season is going to be a challenge because last season in Clay Helton's first year, they went one and three in the month of November. Still were able to get both eligible, but with three or four games on the road, Texas State Marshall then you host Old Dominion Senior Day. And then you got to go to App State, which it's a tough place to play at Kit Brewer. Yeah, yeah, Boone. I mean, that is a very tough place to play. This is a team that controls their own destiny. Coach Helton said it. Everything that they had in mind to start the season is still in place. A Sun Belt Championship still within their reach, but they're going to have to finish strong. Coach Helton mentioned that they are in a position to control their own destiny in the second half of the year. From the 20, Bryn throws to Caleb Hood. 
Taken down to 25. And even though the Eagles have yet to score in this second half, the main thing here, along with getting downfield, is to burn the clock. Yeah, but you're seeing them run hurry up. They're lining up quickly. And five for White. Or excuse me, and five for Hood, that is. It's Caleb Hood's eighth reception of the day. David Badinga runs into a wall on second down. Going straight in to Dylan Howe, 6'3 sophomore. Also, Max Harris was involved on that tackle. He's got 61 tackles in his career, 35 this season, playing at that rover position. Another third down. Man coverage all across your screen, too. Good in motion. Empty backfield for Bryn. Takes a shot deep, and there's the flag, Caleb Hood. Got tripped up by Simeon Hines. Hines is shaking up on the play as well. You see Bryn gets through his progressions, throws it up, and Hines, yeah, he just trips him. Hines is still on the ground. It is pass interference. And we are going to step aside for a moment. Uh, Simeon Hines. Well, that would be just an injury timeout. We'll stay right here on ESPN+. Plus. And you can tell the, the field judge, Clay Brownlee, saw it pretty clear on that pass interference call. Yeah, it was an obvious call. You just hope Hines is OK. He took an awkward stumble. Sophomore from Broward County, Florida. He gets helped up and able to walk off with the assistance of the trainers. First and ten, following the P.I. call for the Eagles. <laughs> Eagles at the 40. Brand oh. the handoff, the ball is out, and it's scooped up by the Warhawks. In the red zone, Earl McQuet. Just mishandling that handoff. That is the last thing you need. Turnovers evened up at three apiece now. I mean, watch this. Bryn just tries to hand it off to White. Got tangled up. And that was what the War were trying to do on the previous fumble that went out of bounds. Look at that turnover, turnover belt. belt. The World Heavyweight Championship. A turnover title. I like that. I do, too. I like that a lot. But now it's time for the offense to respond and capitalize. Your defense has carried you in the second half. Ball right at the 20. First down, Murphy. Handoff. And look at Hunter Smith leaping over a defender and in the end zone. Touchdown, Warhawks. Wow, that is the athleticism that you get from Hunter Smith. He is dynamic, he's electric, and he just hurdled a dude all the way to the end zone. My goodness, are you kidding me? 
Coach Bowden talked about the Warhawk way. And look at this. ULM going to go for two to make it a three-point game. And Jaya Wright is back at quarterback. Huge two-point conversion for ULM. Right under center. It's a reverse. Mortimer thought about throwing. He'll keep. And it's a three-point game. What a second half turnaround for ULM. 6.52 to go in the game. 31 to 28. The Warhawks have scored 19 unanswered points since the second quarter. This game is not over yet. More to come after the break, under seven minutes to play on ESPN+. The energy has shifted inside Paulson Stadium. Score is 31 to 28. The Eagles still leading. Here's the Andre Buchanan on the kick return. He's still going across midfield. And he's still on his feet. Gets pushed out near the 20. And that's a response that Georgia Southern needed. Wow. And the freshman, DeAndre Buchanan. Look at the high end speed from the jump. There's a gaping hole. ULM. I mean, nobody is there to cover. And he just continues, makes a move on the kicker. Somehow stays up after this. Buchanan. Wow. It's another wide receiver on this depth chart the Eagles have. He's a true freshman, Buchanan is, as player down. There's two players down. Two players down for ULM. One of them being Michael Batten. And it's going back. A penalty. Mm. I didn't see a flag. So Batten got up. I mean, this game, David, is just... It's almost been like a tale of two halves. Absolutely. But you can't make out what number that is. It's Randall. It's Trayvor Randall. Outside linebacker, or inside linebacker, rather. And because of the penalty, it was a holding penalty on Jeffrey Smith of Georgia Southern. So that big time special teams play made by the true freshman DeAndre Buchanan gets called back and the Eagles have to start from their own 10. Under 6.40 to go in regulation. Brent on first down, gives it to Jalen White. Ooh. Took a shot, still is up on his feet, now goes down a short game. How has this energy just shifted throughout this game, David? I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. A lot of the students have left. Georgia Southern, it doesn't feel like there's any energy. Second and six, White gets stuck. I mean, these last five, six, seven drives for Georgia Southern have come up to nothing. I mean, just take a look at this. Since the Eagles had that spark in the second quarter where they scored 24 points, they just had, and we're, we're going to show that graphic here after this play, but just not the offense that Eagles head coach Clay Helen or offensive coordinator Brian Ellis wants to see. The passing game has not been good today either. So first down. A short gain once again. 
Gain of two from White. So, so look at this. This has been every drive, the last seven drives since the Eagles scored 24 points in the second quarter. I mean, you look at the last four drives, you're talking about 16 plays in total. I mean, two three and outs and two five play drives, one with negative five yards. Brin throws near side the hood, taken down at 25. The correction, Jalen Barden making the catch there. Bring up third and short. This is crucial. Third and short. I expect ULM to pack the box. So look at this. The Eagles with two tight ends as well. Evan Lester and Keaton Upshaw. Lester in motion on third and three. White. Did he get the first down? Yes, he did. Under four and a half minutes to go. At this point, if you're Georgia Southern, you got to burn the clock. Yeah, you can tell Coach Ellis' mindset has completely shifted. He's seen enough. But there's been too many mental mistakes, too many errors. They're giving the ball to their best player, Jalen White. And White, 24 carries now, 100, in fact, 25 carries instead, 119 yards and his two touchdowns on the day. Three receivers near side for Brent. White. Big hole. Bounces outside. Inside the 30. And pushed out by about the 22-yard line. And that's why Jalen White is RB1 in this Eagles offense. He turned on the afterburners here inside zone. He got the guard pulling and peace John Wembley. Didn't even have anybody to block. Caleb Hood, good job on the perimeter. White does the rest. The 45-yard gain for the senior White. Eagles in Warhawk territory at the 24. Bryn. Rather, it's French that will dump it out to Burgess. He gets taken down. So that's the first time we've seen J.C. French throw the ball since coming in a couple of times in this game. Keep in mind, ULM does have three timeouts. So really, as, as Coach Bowden mentioned at halftime with Whitney, you got to limit the Eagles to a field goal here or still rely on your defense. Absolutely. I mean, that's all you're looking for is holding Georgia Southern to a field goal. Need a force at third and long. Play clock winding down, second and eight. Bryn throws, intercepted. David Godsey Jr., first pick of the year, and the Warhawks have 229 to go downfield. I said it in the beginning of this broadcast, the biggest knock on Davis Bryn is at times he makes really bad decisions. This is one right here. You are in t plus territory. You can at least get a field goal. And that's just a bad throw. I mean, that is the last thing you need to happen. Davis Brin, second pick of the game. Upshaw is not even open. If you're gonna throw that to him, you gotta put some air under the ball to let him jump for it. The sophomore from Mansfield, Texas, coming up strong for the Warhawks and ULM. With 2.29 to go, they have all three of their timeouts. They start from the 11. Can this Eagles defense step up from the first half? Murphy scrambles left. He's going to run and gets across the 20 and a Warhawk first down. And remember, ULM's coming off a one-point loss to Texas State last week. Referees are going to put the ball a little bit farther back, so they're going to say that Murphy... There's a flag. A flag on the play. It's going to push the Warhawks back. Penalties have been the Achilles heel for the Warhawks today. <laughs> It's all up to Blake Murphy now. 
You're down by three points. Jaya Wright actually into the game. Going with your veteran leader in what could be a game-winning drive for the Warhawks that they execute. First and 15 from a six. Pass is complete. Gary Wiley stopped at about the nine-yard line. Mega the 10. Well, right, just kept that one. Now the right, excuse me. Yeah. Draw. Excuse me. And the Warhawks will use their first time out. Wow, Danny has this game flipped. You're talking about Georgia Southern dropping 24 in the second quarter. Everything going right. Three straight turnovers. And all of a sudden, ULM has a chance to go down the field and potentially win this game. Warhawks offensive coordinator Matt Kubik spoke with us about the four-minute situation and a two-minute drill that can win or lose a ball game. And you look what happened last week. It was 21-20 Texas State. The Warhawks are moving down the field. An offensive pass interference call pushed them back, and they ran out of time. It's almost like a, a repeat here. David. Yeah, I mean, you're taking the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> you can't line it up any better for ULM as far as, look, we've lost two games by one point. Now's our chance to turn the tide. Murphy back at quarterback, second down, intercepted by the Eagles. Tyrell Davis takes it to the house for a pick six. Crisis averted. Well, there's the answer from Georgia Southern. Just get another turnover. This defense is carrying the Eagles right now. Wow. Tyrell Davis taking it to the house. His first interception of the year. And it turns into six for the Eagles. And what looked like ULM had a chance to control their destiny and go down the field. Murphy, an interception. This Eagles defense staying strong. Four turnovers. PAT is good by Lance. It is a 10-point Eagles lead again. 38 to 28 with 150 to go. That is a tough pill to swallow if you're coach bout. But watch this. I mean, Murphy, it's the right read. He has an open receiver, but it's too high and it's easily picked. Davis doesn't even have to move. You have blockers out in front. That's just a missed throw by Blake Murphy. He airmailed it. I like how you see here the Mel Hickman was pointing at Kondu Jackson saying go because Kondu was excited after that pick. Yeah, he lead the Calvary at that point. Man, this has been a wild game. That's the first touchdown for the Eagles in the second half, mind you. Comes from the defense. Offensively, Georgia Southern have been able to get much done, but you can rely on your defense in these big moments. It's been eight turnovers in total in this game. This shows how the defense have been playing in this one. Mortimer will return this one for the Warhawks. Tried to go a different direction, and he gets tackled. Evan Lester able to get a shoestring tackle on Bucks Mortimer. If you're Georgia Southern, though, there's a lot that you have to clean up on the offensive end. You can't stall out like they did in this second half. The defense safety, to be quite frank. Davis Brand, I mean, that interception was just not good. You can't have it at this point of the game. And luckily for the Eagles, they were able to turn the ball over again. Brandon Bailey's defense doing what they do best. But man, I... It's crazy to see. Yeah. It <laughs> A wild second half. Walk back on offense, fumble. Murphy picks it up. My goodness, and he's going to step off for a play since his helmet came off. 
Jai Wright returns at quarterback. Georgia Southern is just rushing three. Well, they're dropping everybody back. They're still getting pressure on the quarterback. You got players like Isaac Walker and MJ Stroud. We haven't even named a lot of the defensive players. Second down, right. Rolling left and throws incomplete. to go. Last chance hope. Warhawks do have two timeouts left. The third down, David, has been a struggle. Three for 14. Murphy throws near side, caught! And a first down for ULM. Darian Wiley making the catch. You just gotta go fast now. You can even get a field goal in this situation. You're obviously going to have to try for an onside kick. Another throw by Murphy. And once again, this is Nana Davis making the catch. Davis, Mortimer, and Howell having career performances. Or excuse me, it's Mortimer, Davis, and Albert Luke. But a penalty once again. Going to push the Warhawks back. The Warhawks, there's been a lot of messiness, I'll, I'll use the term, for ULM, yet they're still down by 10, really should be down by three. Given the way they played this match, there's a lot of potential. But right now, that's, that's what it is. It's just potential. Clock winding down, entering the final minute. And it's, oh! Deflected it off of Tyrell Davis. He almost had another one. <laughs> he wanted a second. Had a little bit of a shot on the receiver, too. <laughs> Who would have thought that ULM would have 404 passing yards in this game? That is the last thing I expected. 320 coming from the freshman, Blake Murphy. Second and 20, Murphy throws it out of the hands of Davis. They bring up third and long. You look at this ULM team, and coming into this game, they were not averaging many passing yards. They were averaging 135 in the air, and it's 400 plus today. Third and 20, inside the final minute. Murphy scrambles, too wide on the throw. That brings up fourth down, pass was intended for Wooler. Final chance for ULM. Normally at the bottom of the Sun Belt in total offense yards, 432 today. With four turnovers. Can ULM keep this drive going? Play clock winding down. Murphy throws it deep, far side, incomplete. Turnover on downs. And that should do it for the Eagles. Defense stays strong. Wow. I mean, Blake Murphy, thrown into this position, has performed amazing. I mean, obviously not the result you want, but you're talking about a true freshman that came out here and lit up the Eagles secondary. He looks good, Danny. Someone that we didn't even talk to the coaches about. Yeah. I mean, we were expecting Jaya Wright to be QB1 entering this game. But somewhere early in the first quarter, head coach Terry Bowden wanted to make some changes alongside offensive coordinator Matt Kubik. 
And they bring in the freshman, Blake Murphy. What a game he's had. What a game we have this Thursday. Georgia Southern, Georgia State. Thursday night college football on ESPN2. Will the Panthers be undefeated coming in the Paulson this week? And the bigger question is, how will they fare against an Eagles team that will remain undefeated inside Paulson Stadium? The clock winds down. Georgia Southern hangs on on homecoming. A 38-28 win over the ULM Warhawks. It wasn't pretty, but they got it done. And that's what matters at the end of the day. This is a bottom line business wins and losses. And Georgia Southern still undefeated in Paulson Stadium. Sure, could they have done a lot of things a lot better? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, they found a way to win. ULM scored 21 unanswered points on the Eagles, brought it to a field goal with a pick six by Tyrell Davis, sealed the deal, and a turnover on down. The Eagle defense is something to watch. Yeah, they are. They are very fun. They fly around the football, and they're going to give up some yards. That's just the nature of the way Brandon Bailey's defenses play. But, man, do they get after the quarterback, and do they turn the ball over, fumbles, picks, whatever. They wreak havoc. Davis Brin, 20 for 36, 240 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions, but both Clay Helton and Brian Ellis said, hey, we need to run the football more. And you go to your number one guy in Jalen White, 26 carries, 164 yards, and two touchdowns in White's six career, 100-yard rushing game as an Eagle. Jalen White. He was asked to carry the load today. That was his responsibility, and he has done that and more. A lot of big runs, too, and crucial situations. And the Eagles now 32-9 on homecoming all time and remain perfect inside Paulson Stadium this season, 4-0. Whitney Hayover standing by for player of the game, running back Jalen White. Jalen White, so good to see you back on this field healthy this season, 164 yards today, career high. Right. When you think about all the adversity you've faced since coming back from injury, what does it mean to be able to come out here and do that and get a W on homecoming? Now, it means a lot, you know, just being in front of our crowd and, you know, deliver a W for the community. I mean, just be able to do it with my guys because, like, we go through the struggle every day, every day of the week. And just to be able to do it with them, it's just an amazing feeling. Just be back out with the guys celebrating and starting to feel like myself again. It just, it's just a great feeling. Coach Ellis is wanting to always be equal across the board in terms of passing game and run game. So right. you also sat, had 13 receiving yards. What, is it, what does it mean to be able to have those opportunities and have those plays as well? Uh, it's just um, another way to expand my game, you know, not be a one-dimensional back. So uh, he got to rely on me to run the ball, catch out the backfield, or come up and pass protection whenever he needs me. So, you know, it just, it just helps the team out, you know, as uh, more uh, versatility. ULM was able to slow you all down offensively in the second. ULM was able to slow you down offensively in the second half. So while you'll kind of enjoy this win a little bit tonight, quick turnaround when you because you'll have Georgia State here on Thursday. So what will you all have to do to beat the Panthers? Um, well, first, you know, going to the locker room with the guys, celebrate the W for the night because, you know, winning in college ain't easy, so you got to celebrate every one. And then uh, after that, you got to put it behind us and get ready to come in tomorrow, attack the weights, do our practice, watch our film, and, you know, the season ain't going to stop, so we just got to get ready. That's as simple as that. Jalen, congratulations on going 1-0. Enjoy the night. Yeah, no, you too. Have a good night. A career game for Jalen White, 164 yards, two touchdowns. Georgia Southern improved to 5-2 on the year. 4-0 at home, but a quick turnaround. Georgia State comes into town Thursday night for a primetime match on ESPN2. ULM drops to 2-5 on the season. So for David Holby and Whitney Hay, we're finding Danny Wall saying so long from Paulson Stadium. Final score, Georgia Southern 38, Ewell Monroe 28. And a reminder, all games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.